Good morning, good morning, folks. Good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Let me get my countdown timer gone and me a reappearing. Hello, hello, hello. It's good to have everybody here this morning. Uh, nice Monday morning here for me in the Eastern, Eastern time zone anyway, here in the U.S. Uh, let's see who we got here. Roger, congratulations for being first. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Uh, thank you very much. Sci Spam, good to have you. Preemptive Sleeper, nice to have you as well, and others who are joining us today. So we're, we're going into day five of the drops. Now, I had a little thing I had mentioned uh, uh, earlier that I said that I think on Saturday I mentioned we we're going to do a stranded run today. But, you know, in light of... Uh, couple people jumped in and was asking some very interesting questions in regards to playing No Man's Sky. And I thought, hey, why not? Why don't we just start a new save real quick this morning? And we will go step by step on how to play. And this video will be present, obviously, after the live stream, so anybody can go back and watch it. Um, of Just basically, hey, it, not so much setting up the game as it is just, I'm going to start a normal save, a normal gameplay, guys, and here's how it's going to go. And this is what you do. These are what these plants are for. These are what the different views are for, things like that. So let's get into that. I think that'll be a pretty good idea today. But I want to show a couple other things here. Uh, let's see. First things first, uh, since you all are here early, uh, let's switch over to our regular screen. There we go. And as you can see, I'm kind of sitting, standing in a space station at the moment on my regular playthrough. wanted to show you guys a couple things. Uh, found some stuff. I actually took some shots. Like my background you see at the very beginning of my streams, I love that background. I always think it's one of the prettiest backgrounds I've ever had. It's all changed. Ever since the new update, the new Worlds Part 1 update, it has been absolutely phenomenal, the planets I'm finding now. And probably you all as well as you're playing it. Um, my bases, first of all. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go here first. Black Sand Beaches is what I call this one. It's not a paradise planet, it's a bountiful planet. Plenty of animals, um, nothing to attack us, so none of the animals are aggressive. Uh, the sentinel population is exceptionally low, almost like a paradise planet with the exception of it's got um, storms every now and then, just hot weather storms. That all the streamers are taking time to new players coming on board. The chat is always helpful too. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Brand of Sleeper. Um, it's if we can explain it, if we can show you how to do it, that's what we're here for. You know, honestly. So here's this planet, and I don't have anything but a base computer here. It's called a Bingto, uh, obviously, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the system it's in. It's in the Eisentum Galaxy. I'm glad it's night because you see the sky. The sky is just absolutely stunning. Very pretty. You got these red. Uh, it's not auroras. Um, you know what I'm talking about. But black sand, black sand beaches. There are. There is no white sand. There's no whiteness to this whatsoever. And it does have a worm. I keep hearing it. And up oh, there it is. There it is. It does have a worm that's around the planet. That's the only other thing I've ever seen. But otherwise, this place is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's give you a view during daytime. Blue skies, white clouds, green grass, absolutely stunning. You got little flowers all over the place. You got sort of regular trees and stuff like that. The animal population is very, uh, I think it's like 13, 11 or 13 animals. Blue water. This place is stunningly beautiful. With the exception of the hot storms, it's very pretty. The only things that I see it missing is anything floating in the air, like, you know, having a floating island or something like that. So, great place, but that's the only drawback to this, and I keep kicking it around as to whether I'm going to build a base on this planet or not. I like having a base, Get don't get me wrong, I love having a base on my uh, freighter, but, yeah. Is that the space station? No, it is not. It is over there. It's just a rock. Great. So we're going to head to the space station and get the other one. That's an interesting planet, too. Um, but it, it's aggressive sentinels. It looks pretty, but yeah, you don't want to do much there. Unless you're planning on doing a sentinel harvesting base there. So one last thing we're going to show you. Whoop! And we're going to fly through part of the station in order to land. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, they're working on that. But let me show you 
you saw one of my bases was named uh, Paradise Planet Contender or something like that. I think I named it. Yeah, you know, size spam. It's happening. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen to me, man. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. I've had everything happen to me. All right. One more base, and then we'll call this. Paradise Candidate 1 is what this one's called. Paradise Planet. I'm finding that F8Ps, or F8PFs, tend to be the systems to look for. Um, F designates the um, color of the sun, or the solar the solar color in that area, F and G, is the yellow to hot yellow range. Um, and the 8, I don't know what the 8 designates, I've been looking that up. I know P indicates, uh, I don't remember exactly what it means. I looked it up uh, yesterday and I'm forgetting at this point. But the uh, but the 8, usually the 7s and 8s, I usually find a lot of paradise planets on. In, in systems in, uh, I should say. Rock. Miners used to ride them for miles. <laughs> Indeed. Let me show you this planet. This planet is fabulous. I keep saying I'm looking for the perfect paradise planet that has like the floating islands on it. This one has, instead of the floating islands, it's got the floating flowers. So I'm really deciding whether this wouldn't be a bad transition, that maybe the floating islands wouldn't be such a great thing. Building a base into a floating island would be pretty cool. There we go. And of course it's night again. <laughs> One of these days it'll be day, right? Yeah, okay. This has the has the has the flowers everywhere, and this truly is a paradise planet. And it has, like I said, the floating flowers up above. Let me get up to a higher spot. And this was the kicker. The fireflies. Or at least that's what I picture these as. These must be fireflies or something like that. It's trying to give us this ember appearance. Absolutely stunning. I love this completely. This is just fabulous. Uh, with the floating flowers in the air, a little bit of a fog going on. It is just absolutely gorgeous, this planet. Um, I just picked this spot. There's an actual huge ocean, but I just picked this spot to stop at for the time being. So, Katie Pops, good to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. I am loving this, loving this so much. Countess Mouse, good to have you as well. Thank you very, very much for joining, April. And uh, we are receiving a raid with a party of four. Ziggy Kristoff. Thank you very much for the raid. I really appreciate it. And I'm getting a trader dropping in. 07 to you and 07 to all your guests that are joining us today. Really, really appreciate it today. This is just a stunning planet. Um, I don't know why he's landing, but that's okay. I don't need anything from him. So I want to give another view. Let's get into camera mode. We're going to pull the sun up again. Blue skies. Sort of got a greenish tint to it, which I kind of like. The nice puffy clouds. Blue water. Absolutely stunning scenery green grass everywhere this is like paradise and it's got these huge floating flowers that you can land on i mean you can you personally can you can't land your ship on one at least i haven't tried but you can build something like a platform around the flower and really make it part of a nice little like uh you know 50 meter up sort of sky base you know i think that would be really really cool greetings and salutations to you too marani thank you for being here today good to have you so, yeah, I'm really loving this. This is definitely a candidate for um, a new possible community planet that we could build here. And I just absolutely adore it. Again, I've checked all the animals here. Nothing attacks, nothing aggressive. Very, very pretty. And my ship is on its side. That is really weird. No big deal. And just the water features of these planets now are just absolutely fantastic. I really, really love them a lot. There we go. Love it, love it, love it. Absolutely, absolutely. And happy Monday to you, too. Thank you very much, Ziggy. Appreciate it. So this is just absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, it's funny. It gives us the temperature, too. Um, water's a little chilly. <laughs> 56 degrees is not exactly my prime temperature. I guess when I lived in New York, that was pretty good. Um, but the temperature outside at night, 63 degrees. During the day, it hits about 80. I mean, you can't ask for a better better planet than that, you know what I'm saying? I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Some of the changes to Paradise Planets are going to be reverted, so recheck yours after the next round of fixes. I know I've been hearing about that. I wonder whether the bubbles are going to disappear, but I'm still liking this planet. I'll be honest. I think it's great. 
All right, let's get back to the space station. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be doing, uh, you may have seen in the title, I've decided instead of doing a uh, stranded run that Beeblebum uh, created, we are going to do a how to play No Man's Sky run today. Um, we've had a lot of questions. We've had a new view, a lot of new viewers dropping in and getting drops for, uh, they just purchased the game. They want to get the drops and everything like that. And that's understandable, you know. Oh, by the way, this is also a pirate system. So that's kind of cool too. Haven't been attacked yet. There we go. Ugh, see, it did it again. Pulled me through the side of the station again. That's the second time that's happened today. I wonder if they've done something. Anyway, um, so yeah, how to play No Man's Sky. So we're going to start from the get-go. And you'll notice that I act actually added into the title uh, something that I'm, I'm basically indicating that those of you who are longtime players as well that are watching today, backseat drive, by all means. Bring up things. Say, hey, don't forget to mention... Oh, oh, wait, you forgot to. Please throw that in there. That's what we're here for. We're going to teach the new gamers how to play. And even if they're not watching this channel right now, this video will be out there for anybody to see. And I'm going to download it. I'm going to throw it into CapCut. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it into something so I can re-upload it onto YouTube as well for anybody else who wants to check it out. So, uh, really hated what happened to one of my favorite planets. Me too. Me too. I mean, the bubbles are driving me nuts on those planets. Um, I like them. I always liked bubble planets. I've, I've built small bases on them, but it wasn't primarily why I went for a planet. I didn't look for a planet with bubbles on it. So, so, Katie Puffs, thank you very much for following. 07 to you. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate you. Um, my YouTube channel is down below for anybody. I know you see I've got only got about uh, like less than 50 followers over here, which is perfectly fine. I'm not looking to uh, go too far on Twitch because I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTube creator. Um, over there, my main channel, I have plenty of videos. I let the last check, I think I'm up to almost 480 videos. Um, yeah, get a life. No, just kidding. Um, but we do have playlists in there for No Man's Sky 101. We do have other lists uh, and other crazy, crazy things we've done uh, as far as No Man's Sky is concerned. Almost all of it is No Man's Sky content. I do have a little bit of Minecraft content in there. I do that with my kids, um, all four of them. And we, uh, we play a nice Minecraft family night, which it's not so much the content itself um, or watching Minecraft, nothing special. It's the... Uh, it's the con communication back and forth. Absolutely hilarious, because all of them are as sarcastic as me. Anyway, moving on. So here we are. Um, let's go ahead and get to a portal. I'm going to have to go, obviously, someplace else real quick. I want to get out of here. I'm going to go back to my uh, freighter, if it'll let me. No, won't let me. Um, let me go to my low orbit base. Where are we here? One more. There we go. We'll end here, and then we'll jump out and jump into a new save and go from there. All right, all right, all right. Again, new save is what we're going to start real quick. I don't know if I'll continue the new save or not. I'm doing pretty well on my... Um, and by the way, I renamed my saves. You'll see that in just a moment. Um, I'm doing pretty good on my tertiary save right now, and I'm getting a series going. So we're just going to transition from a drift into worlds on that save, and we'll do the weekly, um, weekly video to see how things are progressing. I haven't cheated too much on that one. I've, d I've done some duplication glitching because I needed to get some items to get the, the video moving along rather than seeing me go to another planet to gather up some more, uh, I don't know, cactus flesh or something like that. Since I already had about 50 or 60 in stock, I just duplicated it real quick and admitted to it. Hmm. Yeah, you see the bubbles there. This is my current community planet. Lemley is what it's called. I decided to leave the name. I love the name Lemley. I, it's just something about the name that I really like. Again, Paradise Planet from up here. Lots and lots of bubbles for some reason. Um, how come everything's night? I, I don't get it. And this is what this planet is going to look like, but unfortunately, we're in a cloud, so you can't see much. <laughs> it was really pretty at one time. Blue water, green grass, everything that you could love in a planet, but you know, it is what it is. You can't see much. So anyway, this is my uh, my little sky base that I've got going on. I'm trying to build a kaleidoscope, but it's going to take some time. I figured that out last video. Good to see you, April. Uh, morning check. What did I miss? Traveler iteration. You haven't really missed much, uh, MJ. Um, just starting out. Wanted to show a couple planets off and stuff like that. You'll see them later. Uh, Vapor Corpse, thank you for vol for following. 07 to you. Thank you very much for following over here. Appreciate it. So, um, yes, we know you're April. I know. I know. Uh, let's see here. I think the bubbles are not as annoying during the day. Yeah, I think they kind of diminish a little bit. Maybe it's the heat of the sun. Oh, look, we got sunrise coming up now. 
Look at that. Look at that beautiful sunrise, huh? Now that's pretty, right there. Okay. You may have to keep this planet around for a little longer. One of the islands down below. That's very pretty. Gotta love to see this, man. I'm just telling you, I... The graphic improvements have really pulled me into No Man's Sky, and I'm very happy with it. I'm going to continue doing No Man's Sky for probably a very long time. So, really, really loving this. It's beautiful down there. Anyway, I think we've done enough. Let me go ahead and hit my... Do I have a save beacon around here? I think I do someplace. Hold on. I know I put one someplace. Did I not put one up here? There's our save beacon. There we go. All right, let's get out of this one. Mode select. All right, so we're going to back to play. As you can see, I've renamed it Primary Main Save, Secondary Main Save, and Tertiary after being criticized for my nomenclature. But you were right. It bothered me, too. Once you pointed it out, I was really pissed off. Rastipanti. Wow. <laughs> I love that planet. I really, really do. And if you haven't played No Man's Sky before, and thank you for chatting. We, we appreciate having you here today. Um... We're going to go ahead and start a very bland, brand new playthrough just for this chat here. And thank you for following. I appreciate that. 07 to you. Thank you very much. Um, Got to get my coffee in. Dumb question. We know when creating a galaxy green is lush. Correct. Normal is, is normal like Euclid. Correct. What are blue and red? Red is aggressive. I can tell you that much. I know red is aggressive where you're going to have a lot of sentinel action there. Um, and more. And hello, Starduster girl. Uh, Starduster Gal, sorry. Hooray, more drops, and happy Monday. Happy Monday to you, too. Thank you for being here. Um, oh, wow, and the update infested your homeworld. I remember you saying that, Marani. I remember you saying about that. Good grief, I hope they change that back. That would be really, really upsetting. Um, yeah, I keep going to galaxies, or I should say systems that supposedly have a, a paradise planet, and it turns out to be an infested planet or a nest, and it's just annoying as crap. Um... I don't remember what the blue is, Marani. I don't remember. I remember that it is similar to green, but I think... You see, there was, there was... Wait, there was green, blue, red, and what was the last one? White, I think. And white was really light on resources, if I remember correctly. It was very, very light on resources. Green was... You get to Isentum that way. Green is your lush galaxy. Um... Red is aggressive, a lot of uh, fighting there. I haven't developed one in that one yet. I'm going to do that one of these days. And then the blue, I want to say is similar to the to the green. It's very, very similar to it, but I think it's like a balance. It's a balance between all of them is what you get on that one. So you just basically get another Euclid-style galaxy, but I think it takes you to... Uh, uh, the galaxy starts with an H and has a number at the end. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Too many things to remember. So, it is what it is. All right, so we're going to start a new save. We're going to help the community. We're going to help them learn how to play No Man's Sky. I'm not going to go through settings on No Man's Sky to, te to show you what you need to set your, your graphic settings and stuff like that to. There are plenty of, of YouTube videos and others <clears throat> that teach you how to set that up. It has to do with your processor, your video card, what kind of system you got, etc., etc., etc. So we're going to hold off on that. We're just going to go into the new game, and I am going to do just a normal one. A lot of folks will do relaxed to just get, like it says, a more streamlined experience, fewer systems to manage, lower costs. I'm going to go normal and just do it this way. Now, when I first started No Man's Sky uh, five-something years ago, I did creative mode and it really wrecked me because I didn't have any clue what to do. I think I played for like two days and I was like, never mind, I give up. This is no, I don't understand any of this. It took the storyline right out of the picture and I didn't understand that. Watching Jason plays, watching uh, Zane from Zane's World, Beeblebum, etc. I learned how to play No Man's Sky. I learned how it was to be played. So I jumped back in and I played it in normal mode and that's my suggestion to do. Normal or relaxed, either way. All right, so I got to Eisen before I got to that part of the quest. So I was thinking about going to something different to get a third galaxy. If you want to go kind of crazy, oh, that's what blue is. Uh, empty or ancestral, I think is, I think April's right. Countess Mouse, that is. Um, I think that's what we're looking at. So it was uh, lighter on that. I thought the white was more um, empty and less resources, but I could be wrong about that. It's been a while. You know, I could Google it. Yeah. 
couldn't we all? Anyway, I'm not going to Google that right now. Let's get started, and our drops are going to start in about 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and get moving. I'm um, kind of a little bit set on stopping at 12.30, okay? So if some of you, if some people jump, jump in late after 9.30, you're not going to finish getting the drop, the last drop from me. Uh, I got to kind of quit pretty early. I got to start my, uh, my, my work day at 1, so it'll be about three and a half hours from now. And I can go a little bit later, but not by much. I do have to grab something to eat and, you know, set things up over here. So there's that. All right, going to go normal and get started. Your planet you start out on is going to be um, usually... Uh, it's not an aggressive planet. You're not going to have animals attacking you. It usually keeps you away from that for a little while. Uh, but it will be toxic in some way. It'll be a hot environment, a cold environment, toxic, um, radioactive, something along those lines. Something that's got some kind of weather that's going to hurt you down the way a little bit um, to teach you about the planet. But the biggest thing that you have to do in No Man's Sky is when you start is to pay attention to what it's telling you you need to do. Bottom right corner, which is why my um, icon is over here and not down here. Or, or a little bit over this way, it'll block some of the data that comes up and shows up. So I put myself over to one side. Activated. Hmm. 140 degrees Fahrenheit, so we got a hot planet. Uh, 1.5 on the radiation scale, so no radiation. Toxicity is a little bit high. I think I see selenium in the distance, so this is going to be a hot planet. Is what we're looking at. Almost done with my coffee. Yay. Okay. So you have a multi-tool, you have a jet pack, you're all set to go, right? Okay. It tells you something about the planet. Unending sunlight, enforcing as the sentinels, abundant and flora and fair and fauna. That's it. Tells you a little name and then it pulls back. And you'll notice that my temperature is dropping at the, at the, over on the left-hand side. So heat levels are detected, hazardous heat levels. And what it's going to tell you to do is to repair your scanner and to find sodium. Now, if you try to do that, it's going to tell you it's damaged. Okay, so we need ferrite dust in order to get to repair it. So it's telling you what to do. So gather ferrite dust of 75. That temperature is dropping though. So first thing I'm going to tell you to do is a little different. These yellow plants are called sodium rich plants and I can't scan it right now. So you want to pick up the yellow plants as often as possible. Any of them that you can see and get to grab the sodium, you're going to need it. Don't worry about the animals. They're not going to do anything to you. We'll talk about them later. Yellow plants. Next thing that's going to be your friend here is going to be a cave. You're going to run out of, as you run around, as you, if you just walk casually, that's perfectly fine. You'll use up a very little life support, but you're going to walk slower to get where you're going. You want to kind of get an idea of where your ship is. And see, I've been turning myself around, so I don't know where it is right now. But you want to get underground. You want to protect yourself. But in case you can't, the sodium will help you. So look for that sodium. That's the first thing. Second thing, we need rocks. These rocks have ferrite dust, as it says. So go ahead and use your... You see I have a mining beam on my, on my uh, uh, multi-tool here. Gather up as much of the ferrite dust as you can. It says you need 75, and it's counting up for you. So we're going to go ahead and get all the ferrite dust we can and do these. Here we go. See? More ferrite dust, more ferrite dust, more ferrite dust. I'm not even moving because all the rocks are there. It looks like we've hit 75 already. So now it's telling us to repair. So we're going to go ahead and do that. As soon as you hit the button to get into your menus, you it will bring you straight to your scanner. So go ahead and do that. So repair it, 75. We're going to go ahead and put that in. We now have a repaired scanner. You'll notice we have a supercharge slot too, but we'll get to that in a minute. Next thing it tells you to do is recharge your hazard protection because it's failing. Okay, and it tells you you need a protection level that's going to give you at least 80. We have 16 sodium right now. So if we do a scan with the C button, it'll tell us where everything is. Anything that says NA, which is the uh, periodic tables version of sodium, that one seems to be further away than I thought. We have one up on the slope there. Let's grab that one over here. So I'm going to head over there. I'm going to run, but I'm going to look at the bottom right corner, and as my run juice is about to run out, I'm going to go ahead and undo it so I can build it back up while I'm walking. 
but the quicker we can get to the sodium, the better, because that will allow us to recharge our hazard protection. Okay, we got a little bit more. We're up to 18 sodium, or 18 more sodium. If you hit the tab button again, you're going to get in your exosuit. You have your starship, which we can't see yet, and you have your multi-tool. So we have 48 sodium in our exosuit. There's two ways you can do this. Either I can pick it up and I can drop it in there, and it will just use what's needed. Sometimes it'll be all of it. Or, if you hit your settings button on the keyboard, it's the X, it'll go straight to recharge equipment. And if you select that, the one that's the most desperate will come up. As you can see, my hazard protection is dropping. It needs to use 29 of it, so we're going to go ahead and do that. My protection is now 100%, and we're good. So that's a starting point. We need lots of resources, of course. And it's telling us to find our ship now. So as we look around, we're going to see that our ship is marked on the menu here by this red icon. So we're going to head over there. It's 570 units away from us. Steps, if you will. So we're going to head in that direction. While we're heading there, gather your resources. Occasionally use your scanner to pull up items. And things that you want to get are going to be like the, the H for the dihydrogen crystals, the NA for your sodium, which this one's kind of buried in there, but you should be able to get to it. There we go. Okay, good. Get more sodium because we're going to need it. I'll get into the other plants later, folks. Don't, don't remind them too much. I was going to make a joke about sodium, but it was like, nah. I may have to set to put you in the corner or something. I don't know. All right. The hydrogen you're going to need. We'll explain it later, but you do need this blue stuff at some point. So gather up as much as you can. But you'll notice that my mining beam at the top right is at 36%. It doesn't really tell you this in the game, but your, your mining beam, as you will learn, requires carbon to recharge. It can also take condensed carbon. Carbon, if you think about it, is from plants. Some of the plants are able to shoot, some are not. So as you come across a plant, if it highlights, that means it's a plant that you can get. This place seems to be a little bit light on the plants, but looks like these green stick, they, pardon me, these brown sticks here, that will likely be, see, it tells us it's salt. Not going to help us at all, right? And these are unidentified plants. So these are actual plants, so they look like rocks. Go ahead and grab them and get some carbon for yourself. And you will be using it later. Also get some ferrite dust. You're going to need that as well. So get as much of these elements as you can. You're going to desperately need them as you go along through No Man's Sky. Ferrite dust, as you might imagine, is iron, or it helps to repair a lot of equipment, fix things. It's used in a lot of different... Uh, in, it's an ingredient in a lot of different things. Yes, yes, play. please razz them a little bit for that awful, awful, awful dad joke. But I have respect for it, too. Just to say. All right, so I'm going to get a little more sodium, and then we're going to keep heading towards our ship. But you notice we're going to keep heading in that direction while I walk. I don't need salt. You might need salt down the road a ways. If you want to get rid of something, you'll see right here it says discard. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it because I don't need it in my inventory. But I do have a good amount of carbon. I could use a little more dihydrogen and the other elements as well. So we'll, we'll get some more stuff as we go. You know what your plants look like. Grab them as you go. Let's get some rocks too. You're going to get sometimes from some items you'll get. Oh, see, it already depleted. So if I go to my charge menu and go to my mining beam, I can select it and put more carbon in. You can also, like I said before, take some, go to your multi tool, and drop it in. Now, one thing I'm going to talk about with supercharged slots, they come in handy for a great many things. If I put my mining beam in there, it's going to do a little more damage and it will actually pick up some more elements more items. So instead of getting, say, 20 from a rock, you might get like 22. It'll give you a boost to it. But your scanner, you see my scanner range is 200 right now. If I put that in there, you see my range went up to 250, which means I can see further. To me, that's more valuable. And I'm going to put that in there to each his own. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a little more carbon because I've used up a, quite a bit because of the recharge to this unit. But you notice it's now just over, just under 100%. And is this a cave? I think we're near a cave. Let's take a look. Caves are good. 
Make sure you can get back out of them. This is not a cave. It's a nice rock. But what do you know? It's actually protecting us, so to speak, from the elements. It's not climbing, but it is protecting us a little bit, which is very, very interesting. I've never been able to do that before with natural items in the environment. Not very often. I've been to a couple planets you could do that with, but very, very few and far between. All right, so we're going to keep going. Lots of elements to see here. Kind of a pretty yellow sky. Got some rings on this planet. We know it's very hot. We haven't had any storms yet, and you won't get any until a little ways into the mission. So we're going to continue on and head towards that ship. Now, you're going to run across things like this. This broken machinery and also multiple plants together. Gather what you can as you can. Again, we need the sodium, and you know we do. So I'm going to pick that up as we go. All right, damaged machinery is very handy. If you go into the damaged machinery, it sometimes has things like living slime, and I'll show you what to do with that. I'm going to hang on to it. Usually I delete it, and as this opens, it gives you an item. Usually it gives you nanites, as you can see at the top right. Nanites are a form of currency in the game, and it helps you purchase special items, so it's good to grab those. The second thing you're going to find near one of these is this. Berry technology. Berry technology, normally you have to dig down with a terrain manipulator to get to it. We don't have that yet. We're not going to get it for quite some time. But one little trick we've learned that most of the time works is if we go to our settings and do a toggle, toggle com, uh, camera view, I usually set this to a hot key by using control and then hitting one of my number keys. I always choose number two. So that way when I get out of here and I hit the number two, I can go to a first person view and back out. So I'm going to go to the first person view, and sometimes, if you're fortunate, it's not deep enough to be out of reach, and you can pick it up. Yeah, this one's too far down. I can't get to this one, so we're not going to be able to get it. Love the shadow, huh? Isn't that cool? Nice. Help request. I've collected four days of drops, but I don't see a Twitch option in the Anomaly Quicksilver shop. If confirmed, I connected my account and linked, relinked, connected on the Twitch NMS page. Does anyone know how to fix it? interesting i haven't been there yet either let's get over to the ship let's actually do a quick check on that i had to unlink and relink my account too because it was having problems um are you using steam or are you using um playstation xbox etc i'm assuming not xbox because we all know what the problems are over there steam yeah um you should have access to it, so that'll be a good example. When we get to my ship, we'll jump out of this game real quick. I'll jump to my other save, and we'll check out the anomaly real fast. Maybe we can troubleshoot that, and we'll come back to this. All right. If you go to your escape menu, by the way, it pauses everything. Everything in-game is paused, including game counting time. So if you've got five minutes into the game, and this is all you've been playing it, it will pause your time, and it won't accumulate any more time in-game. Uh, any of the other menus, though, uh, however, will get you into that. So let's head down. I was there on PS5, and it wasn't available an hour ago. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't checked my drops yet, because, by golly, I have so many Twitch drops from all the other expeditions, from Expedition 1 on, and all the Twitch drops forever, that I haven't even acquired most of them. So here's your ship. Radiant Pillar is what it's named. And I think we can pick this one up. Let me get this particular broken machine, uh, uh, Berry Tech. Come across it. Wow, I can't even get that one either. So, it seems that our last viewer was correct, that we're having trouble with that lately. So we can't get them as easy, as easy as we could. The Radiant Pillar BC-1. Everybody gets one of these at the very start. If you get in the ship, it will protect you from the elements and you'll slowly build up. It's going to give you information, in this case, iteration online. Atlas connection intermittent, launch thrusters offline, pulse engine offline, I find myself alone on a strange world, unequipped and in danger. I have no memory of how I got here, no sense of a before. But this ship at least seems to recognize me, the controls react to my touch, or at least to that of my exosuit. I'm not dead yet, and this ship is a lifeline out to the stars. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's go through this real quick. Uh, read log. It's going to tell us that log 4925A is unavailable and substituting data. And then it's going to tell us that the exosuit is connected. Suggestion, pilot should perform maintenance. Select desired repair path. So we're going to go back to repairing ship systems. Self-guided repair protocols initiated. And it's just going to start telling you to repair your pulse engine. 
and then your landing gear right after that. The bottom right is going to tell you some information. So it's going to tell you to get out of the ship, but you'll notice that my heat protection is now climbing. So we are protected from the elements. Let's jump back out of the ship, and here we are. There's things around here. Just to get started real quick, we're going to repair this by making a metal plate. That's what it wants us to do next, and we'll get to that in a minute. If you go into the damaged containers, you can pick up items. Rusted metal is going to be your friend at the beginning, so grab that. You can use that later on to turn it into ferrite dust. It's a, it's a 1 to 2 ratio, so that 60 me uh, rusted metal will give us 120 ferrite. Very handy. And we just got an item out of there. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got this, by the way, so keep that in mind. So we just got, it looks like an item. I, don't, I didn't see what item we got. Someone else will have to remind me is what we got. You notice we also have some damaged machinery, so we're going to go in there as well. Get the fecium. It's poop. Yes, but grab it because you're going to need it later on. Drops have started. Good, good, good. And we got nanites out of it again. Sometimes you get an upgrade, so it's worth looking at. The yellow containers are also very much worth it. They sometimes give you an item. In this case, it gave me dihydrogen. About seven, but still, it's a start. And these little red containers, grab them. They will always give you things like condensed carbon or oxygen. Or dihydrogen, that's another item. These require a special Atlas Pass to get. You'll get to those later on in the game, don't worry about them. Finally, your iteration. Go ahead and hit this. Scenario iteration deleted. Boundary separation failure likely. It's talking about you and your character. It's saying that you were separated from reality for a time. The vessel, that is the ship, was emptied. Cause sentinel interve intervention deliberate transfer. You, actually, it's talking about you being the vessel, if you will. You were emptied, and there was a sentinel intervention that caused it. There was a deliberate ending of you and restarting of you. Keep that in mind. Fresh iteration generated. That's you. Anomaly containment prepared. So if there's an anomaly present, we've got an issue, and it would we'll, we'll like to try to contain you, if you will. So now you can broadcast your position or just leave. Now, broadcasting tells the Atlas where you are, and it will track you. Leaving... It will still track you, but it will be upset with you. <laughs> I don't know if it makes any difference, to be honest with you. I never really... I tried going with the leave. It really doesn't make a difference to me. So I'm just going to broadcast for now. Broadcast received. Traveler anomaly, anomaly detected. And it's going to tell you that we are compliant. That the anomaly is compliant. Position logged. System integrity scan initialized. So now it's checking the systems to see why this anomaly, you, have appeared. As you get further into the storyline, and it will be quite a few hours, you're going to learn what that's all about. All right, so we are done with this section over here. I'm going to jump in and out of the ship real quick and get a save point, and I'm going to check things out real quick. We can save it for late if there are new people getting their how-to from the best. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But here's what we're going to do. I'm interested, too. I really want to know if these are working, and it is kind of the point behind streaming today is this so i've uh, jumping in out of, out of your ship will give you an auto save point and a restore point um the game will auto save on its own periodically so even if you lock up for some reason you're not going to lose much that's something they introduced a few uh, updates ago thank heavens so let's go back out to mode select we're just going to go into my normal secondary main save real quick and i want to check the anomaly real quick this will only take a few seconds a minute or two so let's just check it out and see what's going on. Very, very curious as to what's happening and why we're not getting our drops. I should have had drops by now, too. And I haven't checked in a couple days uh, since I've reset the, um, the link that you see in the chat box on, uh, down, down over to one side there, the link at the top. I have went through that again, and I noticed I was unlinked for some reason, so I relinked it. The drops should have appeared, so we're going to check that out. And, I can, and you can see the new drops, Cy Spam says. Just check my anomaly on PC Steam. My drops are there. All right. All right, so everybody seems to be getting them. Let me just jump in there real quick and make sure I've got them too. It's nighttime again. It's like always perpetual nighttime lately. We're already in space. No hesitation getting into the anomaly anymore. Go straight in. I love it. Love it. I don't have multiplayer on, so you're not going to see anybody else in here. Just keep that in mind. Alright. 
Quicksilver vendor over here is where we're headed. We're going to check it out. And Twitch rewards, number four. Uh, looks like worm hunt, short grass. Let me just see something here. Not owned. Let me just go through this real quick. Short grass was one of them. I remember the Animata Freighter Trail, the Titan Worm Cape. Yes, yes. It looks like I have them. The blue multi tool. That's what I was looking for. So I've got all my update updates as well. Pardon me, my Twitch drops as well. It looks like there's the ships. Okay, great. Not too keen on it. I love this. <clears throat> I like green and black together. I think that looks really, really hot. Um, losing the voice there a little bit. So there we go. Okay. Good, 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 good. So they're all, they're all in here. But I got a lot that I haven't claimed from previous Twitch drops, as you can see. Just because if you acquire all of these drops, it just... I don't think I have enough room in my inventory, <laughs> to be honest with you. And you don't have that many ships. Unless they give us about 40 ships, there is no way I'm getting all of it. All right, let me just jump in and out real fast. Again, don't forget, a lot of people have been asking about the Expedition 2. Wednesday. The Expedition should drop on Wednesday. All right, so back to our new save. Right here. 12 minutes in. We'll get back to that. Uh, it appears that day-night schedule has been shortened, or I'm just not lucky. I'm wondering if they have sped it. Oh, you know what? That's right. I read something about things speeding up in regards to orbits and stuff like that. So I think day and night are, are, are shorter now. Ah, I forgot all about that. I wonder if their server thing is still messing up. It could be. It could be. And the thing, too, about uh, Microsoft, keep that in mind. Microsoft had that wacky issues. Uh, Saturday so uh, Friday Friday so yeah they could be having some weird issues going on. I had a weird bug that last two weeks before the update where I couldn't see the weekend anomaly missions maybe something on my side rats oh you may want to go I don't have a video on it myself you may want to do a backup of your game your cloud save is always there but you may want to go ahead and uninstall reinstall I hate to do that to you, but I've had to do that on occasion, and I'm actually thinking about doing it at some point myself. So, all right, so getting back to it, we need a metal plate to repair our pulse engine, and we need ferrite dust, and you'll notice it says acquired. I've got 50 of 50 already. So, let me just check it out. You'll notice I have plenty of ferrite dust. Okay, so, and we got some condensed carbon out of one of those containers. That's nice. So, I'm going to go over to our starship. You can do this in any inventory. And you're going to create one metal plate. It'll tell you using up 50 of your ferrite dust to make it. So we got that. We're going to go to our pulse engine. We're going to make it. There we go. So we got that fixed partially. We still need something called a hermetic seal. So just wait a couple moments. Starship repair partially complete. Board the starship and consult ship diagnostics. Okay. So do as it tells you to do. We'll get into more items later on. You notice there's a lot of things I haven't collected from you old time gamers. So those who are new to it don't realize that I've, there's a bunch of stuff I haven't collected yet. So iteration, not going to do the number. Functional. Starship critically damaged. Vital ingredients missing. Unable to synthesize required components. Pulse engine requires hermetic seal. Request assistance. Recommendation. Iteration comparison reveals hermetic seal nearby. Salvage planetary chart from the distress beacon right over there. Uh, from the distress beacon cache. Okay. So... Repair the pulse engine. We need to exit the ship and go over there. So let's go over there. Now, this is going to be the hairy part. I suggest you pick up items along the way. So when we get this planetary chart, okay, so I peer inside the beacon's housing as well as its distress broadcast unit, it contains a planetary chart. We're going to grab that. Yeah, it must be done. It must be done. That may be what's going on here. All right, so here's our planetary chart. If we go in our inventory, we'll see it's flashing at us. E, plot, root. So let's go ahead and hit that, or route, and how you like to say it. It does a pullback. These are very handy to see your surroundings, and sometimes you can see buildings in the distance. I think I see one right down there in the bottom left. But there's one straight ahead of us. So we're going to head in that direction, 900 units away. Um, side issue. I know, but I feel really bad 
for Microsoft in the issue of last week. It wasn't their issue at all. It was a CrowdStrike issue, third-party security software. Yes, we know. That caused an issue in the Windows system. It was installed on, yet so many people are calling it the Microsoft 0365 issue. Yeah. I think everybody is also calling it the CrowdStrike issue as well. So I think CrowdStrike is getting their, um, getting their hits as well. At least that's what I had to look up to look up the uh, fix myself. The weird part was, is I had that uh, crash, that blue screen of death on Friday during the middle of the stream. And I thought it was related to that. But I checked my operating system. I went through all the uh, files that it told me to. Didn't even find a folder for CrowdStrike. So I don't think I have it in my computer. It might be business machines that they're in. So, or different versions of Windows. So I'm very interested to see that. I don't know. I have thoughts as in regards to what actually caused my issue, and it could be related to those issues, but I'm wondering. So, anyway, let's move on. As we head towards this, fair warning to you noobs, let's do a scan because I want to pick things up along the way, and I'm, I can deviate side to side. I'm looking for sodium. I'm looking for oxygen now. Oxygen is going to be needed at some point. So keep walking, keep running. And here is the thing. You're going to get partway through your walk there, and a storm's going to kick in. In this case, it's a heat storm. If you're on a hot planet, that's good news, because it's good for your jetpack. Drax Razor, thank you very much for following. 07 to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate your being here today, too. So as you're going, they're loving the ship from yesterday. Hope people manage to get it. Yes, it is a cool-looking ship, isn't it? I'm not sure hits two stock was down 23 percent at one point but ms is getting still getting the headlines which is annoying i agree pick up items on the way and you'll see this the firestorm it's talking about you're going to get some good stuff out of these gather it up it's worth hitting okay so we got stuff we're going to keep heading so look at the bottom left i'm now at about 160 degrees fahrenheit don't ask me what it is in celsius i can't do the math in my head continue to do scans and pick up sodium on the way you're going to run out of run juice on occasion, but keep running. The hotter it gets, the more efficient your jetpack is on a hot planet. So use that to your advantage. If you're on a toxic planet where it's poisonous, the toxicity for some reason makes your run juice last longer. So use that to your advantage. So now we're really, really hot now. Once it peaks, 235, use your jetpack. Watch the jetpack juice. You'll notice it lasts a lot, lot longer. You got caves on the way, use them. If you hit the ground too hard, it's going to hurt, but in normal mode, you shouldn't get too injured and just keep running. If your storm protection there, the heat protection goes down too low, simply just um, use your sodium that you've been gathering. And it will warn you all the way down through 25, 10, 5, it'll let you know as, as it gets lower. I usually get it allowed to get to about 25% before I do anything. I don't have any oxygen. It's really, really weird. Okay. So just to show you, there's our our uh, hut that we're going to go into. Let's head in there. I have, I'm have i just about to hit 25% now, but we're so close. Don't waste your, your materials on it. Just enter and allow yourself to recharge. It actually recharges faster in one of these than it does in your ship. So go ahead and use that. About 70 degrees Celsius? Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, I hope people did manage to get it, because that ship looked pretty cool. Um, a couple of them look cool, but I like the solar ship myself. That's what I'm looking for. Any of these things that you can collect, go ahead and collect them. These research specimens give you, for some reason, um, they give you an advantage towards the, what do you call it in this area? Um, wow, uh, my mind just went completely blank there. So, depending upon the system you're in, could be uh, like Gek, Corvax, or Viking, or your three races, it'll give you props towards that race, and you'll get a better reputation, is the word I'm thinking of. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, this is what you're looking for. Now, normally these things, these holo archives, will give you nanites, but for your quest, it will give you something else. And you notice that the weather is now clearing. Accessing archives, six of seven logs corrupted. Entry 4924A follows. No one bzzzt, making this recording in case bzzzt, leaving behind. Bzzzt, and the fabricator bzzzt, might be of some use. So obviously it's a corrupted recording of whoever was here before. 
Psst. Visor damaged. Psst. Can't find ship. So you're going to recover the supplies. Obviously, this one didn't make it. The log finishes and the machine whirs to life, spitting out supplies. I have the hermetic seal. I need to repair my ship. Whoever it was that led me here, whoever left this message, perhaps they found themselves in the same situation as I do now? Indeed. All right, so we got our seal. As with anything in No Man's Sky, we're going to tell you to always check everything. Check the other container. See if there's anything in it that will be of use to you. Looks like we have a restore shield, so if you got hurt, it'll restore your shield. You have plants sometimes. Gather them. But guess what? You can sometimes gather them more than once. I just got 30 carbon out of that one plant. You can't really you can you can spin the chair a little bit, but it's really not necessary. There's nothing really in here except the light, so we're gonna go ahead and exit. You notice we have some buried tech over here. Let's see if we can pick this one up. Nope, can't pick that up either. Very interesting. Gary was the one that brought it up yesterday or the day before and said something about that. I'm going to take the residual goop for now. Again, we're going to show you what that's useful for. And we got more nanites. So we haven't gotten anything out of these yet that we can use. Uh, where's our ship? Press F to locate your ship. Up, oh, we need a visor. So we got to do that next. So let's go ahead and it says we need a carbon nanotube. So begin visor installation. Um, smart thing to do would be to go inside. Well, someone just like to sit outside and check out the uh, sunset, I suppose. Love the weather, I suppose. All right, so we're going to stay in here, and we're going to go ahead and install our visor. I'm just going to put it over here, actually. It's installed, but it needs a carbon nanotube. So to get a carbon nanotube, go back to your exosuit, and you use one of the open slots in order to select here. And it gives you all the items that you can make. Usually there's about two pages of it. In this case, you have to make it from carbon. Good thing we've been gathering it all this time. So we're going to make one carbon nanotube. Go back to your multi-tool. Fix said analysis visor. And it is now completed. You can stay like this or it's not kicking me out. Okay, we'll kick it out on our own. So now it says analyze objects for rewards. Now that's important. So now that when you uh, are have this installed, if you hit your F button on your keyboard, if you're using keyboard and mouse, you can now look at things a little differently. You're looking through a scanning device, an analyzer, if you will. You can look at items like these, uh, in this case, an inorganic object, and it tells you it has a primary element and a secondary element. If you're looking at it normally, let's get close to one real quick. And we'll check it out. See, unidentified plant, unidentified mineral. You notice it only has one item, carbon, Alright, dust, but if we look at this, it tells us that there's an analyze to get a secondary item. So if we go through here and you analyze it by holding your left mouse button down, it'll tell you it has salt and ferrite dust. You don't get a lot of the secondary element, you get a few, and that's it. So that's all you get. Okay, continue. So we can also identify these, but you notice it only has a primary element, so it's just going to tell, it, tell us it has ferrite dust, and that's it. Okay? So that comes in very handy down the road a ways when you need it. Another thing you can look at is these little animals. So if I scan this, it'll tell me something about it, but you notice it gives me a reward of 1,125 credits. That works for anything that we scan, including these rocks, or plants in this case. 562 credits. If you hit your right mouse button, you can zoom in on things and scan them, and you don't have to stay on them. There, more credits. Okay, ship flying over. There's another animal. I'll just show you this real quick. So I'm going to scan the animal, and I'm going to look over here. See, you still get the scan. As long as you start the scan while looking at it, you can look away. Okay, so, and you notice we have some stuff on the way. We have an ancient data structure. Those are very handy. One, two, and three star items. You can usually gather those one, two, and three star items, but they come at a price. Just a heads up, and it's a warning. Sometimes the Sentinels don't like you doing it. So... Moto Monster, thank you very much for following 07 to you too. Thank you very much for being here. We are doing a regular playthrough in order to teach people how to play No Man's Sky. I haven't been able to pick up the tech underground on flat ground, but ones I find in the wild still work unless it's on a really steep slope. Yeah, if they're really de buried deep, it'll be a problem. I'm going to gather up some more dihydrogen because I know I'm going to need more. Now, you notice the storm is gone, but now that the storms have kicked in, you're going to get storms more often now. So just a fair warning. Now, you see that this is a big rock of condensed carbon, but we can't get it without an advanced mining laser. The smaller ones, though, we can get those. 
Get them. Get them, get them, get them, get them. You need all that. The condensed carbon is just like regular carbon, but condensed. Chakra 2K, thank you very much for following. 07 to you. Thank you very much for being here. So we're going to go ahead and continue with the regular playthrough. I'm going to do another scan and look for stuff. Oh, we got some oxygen over there. I'm going to head over there. Oxygen is very much necessary, as you might imagine. Duh. You're a traveler entity, and you need to breathe and live. So you need oxygen. So gather the oxygen. It's not so much that you're breathing it. It's you need it for your life support when you can't get anything else. So grab your oxygen as you can. The oxygen plants look like this, the little red plants. If you scan them, it'll tell you that it's an oxygen plant. But again, I'm getting 562 credits. Early game money. Get it. All right. And we see we have some plume of smoke over there. That's damaged machinery. Another good thing to grab. There's some sodium floating in midair. I'll grab that. Yeah, there's still going to be some graphic glitches. Let's scan a couple more of these animals. I think I've already scanned you guys. You're good. Oh, I haven't scanned you yet. I'll scan you. Ooh, there's those data structures there. Let me show you those real quick, and then we'll head over to the other thing. Data structures look like this. They're one-star items. If you have a sentinel nearby and you try picking these up, the sentinels get upset. But they do give you some stuff. You get navigation data from them most of the time. Occasionally, it'll give you an upgrade. But I got two navigation data out of it, and there's a third one hanging back behind here. Three navigation data. So that's what I got out of this. Oh, fourth one. Missed it. And there's another navigation data. I was hoping for an exosuit upgrade or something like that, but I didn't get that. Not this time. Let's head for the damaged machinery on the way. Again, there's our ship, now that we know where it is. If you look through your visor at it, and you hit your E button while you're looking, it'll select it so it's highlighted at all times. You'll also notice that there's something else on this planet called the salvage container. We'll get to those later. Sorry I'm late, was out shopping. It's been almost an hour. Did you do four complete speedruns? <laughs> no speedruns today, my friend. No speedruns. We're not doing that today. Speedruns. Uh, sodium nitrate you cannot get unless you have an advanced mining laser, so we're not going to worry about that just yet. So we're going to keep going. A Krusty Yates asked, Morning, are you running the game through Steam? Yes, I am. Keyboard, mouse, Steam. Absolutely 100%. I've always done everything on... Pretty much this, for the most part. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got gaming systems and stuff. I'm going to grab my rusted metal from here. And we got nanites out of it. Okay, so no big deal. Again, we got some buried tech. If it's close to the surface, we might be able to pick it up in first-person mode. Not today. Not close enough. So again, uh, it looks like MJ's correct. <laughs> um, you see that little red icon at the top of your screen that has an exclamation point? That means you're about to walk into a hazardous plant. This guy right here is hazardous. You see the oxygen, though? I wonder if I can get it. Can't get it. Okay. So it is a hazardous plant, but if you point your laser at it, and you take them out, you're going to get oxygen from them. So I got 13 oxygen from that one. There's another one over there. I'm going to get him, too. So that's a second way you can get oxygen on this planet. All right. Ooh, it looks like we got some condensed carbon here. I like the condensed carbon better because it recharges things much faster. More efficient, if you will. And I can't get this one because it's too big. All right. I love when I've told my entire family that I'd be streaming this morning and they're all starting to send me questions. Hey, are you streaming right now? Yeah. <laughs> So if you're watching the stream, dear, yes, I am. <laughs> what else we got here? Hold on, hold on. All right, so I got those plants, too. Oxygen, yay! Hold on a second here. Let's get caught up a little bit on the chat. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm playing through Game Pass, and I don't seem to have the update. Uh, yeah, very common there, Krusty. Um, I thought that the delay was just consoles, but maybe not. Not really sure, though. Um, PC Steam always gets the update first, for pretty much for the, for the most part. Um, Nintendo and Xbox always are later, and PlayStation falls in the middle. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Um, but yeah, Microsoft has been delayed, as you know, about their issues last Friday. They had some problems, not to mention they like to vet the crap out of all the updates that come through. So there's always a delay, unfortunately. So continue to get the drops. You'll get the update later on. 
Um, Game Pass will get it at the same time as Xbox and essentially universal binary, which applies to both Xbox and Game Pass. Very good to make her. Thank you very much for that. House to the house. I love how they made those things huge. I know the snappers are tremendous in size, but the uh, the blow up ones, the, the ones that puff out and explode with the three little oxygen things around them, they can be various sizes on planets. Sometimes they're huge. Sometimes they're tiny. Been seeing that a lot. Scan the hazardous plants. Yes, she is right. April is correct. Uh, Countess Mouse is correct. We should be scanning those plants, and we'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, Krusty, thanks. I haven't played in years, so I wouldn't be able to tell. Uh, but there's one small change that I don't see to have, which kind of tipped me off. Oh, okay. What was that change? Oh, you're talking to Demaker. That's fine. But I'd love to see what, what you have to say about that one. That's good. All right, so I'm going to take a look here. So now as you look through here, as we're heading towards our ship still, you notice my... my Hazard protection's getting low. I'm going to do a charge. I got plenty of sodium, so we're going to hit that up real fast. You notice that there's things underground. We have deposits on the on the planet. This planet happens to have mag magnetized ferrite. It's also got copper, which we're going to need later. And it should have a third element. Let me see if there's one floating around. There it is, phosphorus. Not surprising. Hot planet, phosphorus. Yeah, you're going to have that on this planet. This shows you the buried technology modules. Those look like these little icons and will always be those. These are plants, fireberry in this case. Plants are your friend on this planet, especially early game, because as you're running around doing things, it really helps you out a lot. So that's a couple things. You're going to see sweet root and all kinds of various plants. Solar vine you can't gather yet, but we'll get to that later. Those are the icons for damaged machinery, as we just hit before. Um, let me see here. This is buried cache. Very handy. If you can find buried cache and you go across it and pick it up, you can sometimes get upgrades out of those. Pulpy roots, another plant. Okay, and we're back around. This is a buried mineral form formation. I'm going to go ahead and scan this little guy right here. So you look at something like a plant, as you just corrected, or whatnot. For me, the description is right on top of the item. In this update, the description is off to the side, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. They put this little thing where it puts like a line out just to point at it, so you can still look at the item without the name blocking the item. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at stuff, and this, the name goes boom right in front of it, and I'm like, I'm trying to look at the plant here, okay? I want to see what it looks like, but whatever. I like it a little better this way. It's a little bit disorienting at first, but it happens everywhere, even in the uh, space stations and the anomaly. When you walk up to different characters that are in there, the NPCs, their name appears to one side now rather than hovering right over their head. So it's taking some getting used to, but it's cool. Hey, to each his own, whatever you want to do. <laughs> All right, We've got a three planet system. That's good to know. We'll get to the menus in a minute. All right. So I want to check out this mineral formation, but I can't. I can't dig down to get it. So we're going to continue on. Same thing with the salvage containers. I'd love to get them. That is good money early on, but we're not going to be able to do that. So let's head back towards the ship. I'm going to do another scan. Looks like we got some oxygen possibly on the way. 210, 175. Yeah, we'll grab the oxygen. Actually, I think I know what that is. That's the oxygen patch that's near our ship. I forgot about that. All right, I'm not going to keep scanning all the animals and stuff like that. You get the idea that if you scan things, you got primary elements, you have secondary elements in every rock that you'll scan. Once you've scanned a certain type of rock, you won't be able to scan it again. Uh, so that just gives you the rough idea here. Secondary element in that, that's going to tell us it has pure ferrite and dihydrogen. But you'll also notice it says at the bottom, advanced mining laser required. So we can't pick it up. But let's grab this fireberry. You can't scan the harvestable flora. But if we pick this up, we're going to get some items out of it. And what do these items do? Let's go back to our exosuit. And you'll see that it gives us, consuming it, gives us 5% life support. So, very good to pick this up early game. As we consume it, our life support, as you can see, is climbing. We're now up to 61%. So now I don't need to charge my life support yet. Ah, we have another item called an organic rock. How interesting. I may show you that in just a minute. This item is a subterranean relic, and for, for early game money, it's worth it, but that also indicates, when it says subterranean, a cave. Caves are handy early game if you want to get your, get your uh, hazard protection recharged. There's also things in the cave that you need. So here's our oxygen plants. I've already scanned them, so I can't scan them again. But they always puts four near your ship, which gives you about 100, 90 to 100, 88 cheapskates. No problem. So I'm going to keep walking through here and show you a couple more things. We've got a hazardous flora here. 
Remember, I was just yelled at for not scanning my hazardous flora. So I'm going to do that right now. And it gives us money. So we got that now. It tells us everything about it. That is handy on certain expeditions, too. You may have to scan a number of plants. Every planet will have hazardous flora to give you that. All right. What else do we have around here we can look at real quick here? There's our subterranean relic. Unfortunately, I don't see an entrance to a cave, I think. Or is this it? Let me check. Yeah, this might be it. That item, by the way, is a subterranean organic structure that you can get for money. But, again, you'd have to be able to dig. Um, this is not a cave. It is a ditch. Okay. So I cannot get to this cave here. I'd show it to you, but, uh, yeah, I'd have to be happy to get down in there. Is that an opening? Ooh, it is. Ooh, we got an opening to a cave. They're usually not this narrow. I've got this rock in the way, or plant, as the case may be. Has it got a secondary element? No. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's go ahead and just get this out of our way, because that'll help us in there. Hopefully we can get back out. Wasn't too bad of a drop. Couple things to look for. You'll notice that, first of all, my hazard protection is uh, climbing, so that's good. Okay, reading through the chat real quick here. You only get four near your starter ship if it doesn't randomly place at a building, or it's just out in the wild, and it will have those four O2 plants next to it. That is true, Demager. Absolutely, 100% true. In the new games, when you start a new save from the get-go, it will always have the four plants there. You'll always be at an abandoned crash site like I was at. Um, if you're doing an expedition, it's a whole nother story. It may put your ship next to a building or something like that, and you will not get the four plants. I have yet to start a new game ever, including um, uh, permadeath snow, snow starter ship challenges where I've seen my ship. I've never seen one appear next to a building. Not yet. I guess it could happen, but I haven't had it happen to me yet. First three drops achieved. We're on the march. Word. All right, good deal. Word. <laughs> I just showed my age. All right, so we've got this here. We've got Vortex Cube. So you remember those subterranean relics? That's what they look like. Um, I'll pick one up for now. I don't usually pick these up, but, you know, you see how many credits I've got. i got close, short of 10,000 uh, units right now. Credits is what I keep calling them. Um, these are worth about, in this case, 5,800 units. So it seems like a lot of money, but when you get down to it, as you learn down the way, it's not going to be that much. These are not worth it to keep it in your inventory. You get 10 of them, obviously 58,000 units. You will be picking up items. Like if you can get some of that buried tech, they're worth easily more than 10 of these combined. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it from my inventory because I don't feel like taking up the space. You have a little thing here called... Let me back up a little bit so you can look at it. The yellow plants here called cave marrow. If you get your refiner later, you can refine these into sodium. That's about the only use they have. You will be using them in a quest later on. Um, so there's that. These rocks, though, are cobalt. Cobalt is handy to build certain items. As we look at the cobalt, we have a secondary element, so I'm going to go ahead and get that. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Getting lucky this time, they have copper in them. Not all the cobalt ones, and these are stalagmites. You also have stalactites hanging from your ceiling occasionally, if I can turn on my lamp and take a look around. There's one. There's a stalactite. It just has cobalt and no secondary element. Not all of them will be cobalt, though. So cobalt, copper, cobalt, copper, cobalt, copper. Let's get some because we need some to make what I'm going to show you in just a moment. Get a couple hundred. Get at least a hundred of it just to start with, but a couple hundred would be good. Occasionally you'll get rocks called geodes. And we'll show you what to do with those. But try to get about a hundred cobalt if you can. I think we got about 40, 50, whoops, 60, and there we go, 70. I think that should be enough, right? Let me check. Okay, we got 117. Geodes, they're not useful by themselves, but if you analyze them, they'll turn into either more cobalt or into a secondary element. In this case, it gives us more cobalt. It may have turned into ionized cobalt, which is useful in recipes. But we have a lot of cobalt now. That's great. In combination with ferrite dust, we can make something called an ion battery. Batteries can be used to recharge your hazard protection. It's very useful early game. It doesn't tell you about that at any point in time that I've ever noticed. So go ahead and make a couple of these. See, it only takes 10 cobalt and 5 ferrite dust. So I'm going to make... I'm just going to make 5 of them for now so I have it. Okay? And there we go. 
Expedition starts can be fun. I've spawned underwater before. A few times. I've done that a few times on some planets. It's really, really strange. Very strange to spawn underwater and you're like, what in the world is going on? Some of these caves will have other items in it that are like unidentified plants and stuff like that. That's great if you want to get them. I wanted to see if I could find one of these so I can show you the differences. I'm just going to jitter out there for a second. Ah, see, there it is. So this one doesn't have cobalt. It has gold. Gold is a very handy element. So let's go ahead and get that. It's great to find early game because you can make stuff with it. So I got about 35 gold. That's excellent. See these bulbous plants over here? They're hazardous. You, can, you can't scan them, but try not to get too close to them because they'll damage you. So that dust that it puts out. But you'll notice this one is an oxygen one, so I'm going to go ahead and take it out. It takes a couple moments, but we'll get some oxygen from it. Usually about 10, 8 to 10. There we go, 8. All right, and then we can check out this one has silver in it. That's excellent. Rather than cobalt, we'll get some silver. I'm going to get that too. Excellent. Now these are useless ones. Sometimes they're useless. They'll come up with a name if you can get them, but those don't. So we're looking more for ones that look like this is the ones that we can find. The ones that are coming up from the ground. This one has cobalt. Okay, so we're good. You will find usually gold, silver, and platinum. Platinum is your most valuable um, item. No, we're not going to find steel. Already looked into that. That was a really, really odd occurrence. I'm glad I got a picture of it. Because apparently no one has ever gotten a picture of it before. So I posted that picture on my community tab in YouTube. If you guys want to see what it looked like. Um, it just looked like any other um, stalactite hanging from a ceiling. That's all it looked like. Nothing special. So, alright. So I think we got enough for now. I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Let's get out this hole here. Make sure you can always climb back out again. Because if you can't, you don't have a terrain manipulator. And you'll have to find a way out another way. Or... Go back to a save point that you hope has it. You might be lucky enough to win the lottery twice. Uh, easy there, Demager. Easy, easy, easy. Confirmed. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> you see this is smoking again, but you can't really get anything from it, I don't think. I can? Okay. It reset. It's because I exited and re-entered the game again. I bet you anything that's the reason why. But we didn't get anything, did we? I think we got some nanites from it. Have these all reset too? Alright, this is weird. This isn't supposed to happen. Maybe this is a mistake or a glitch. Alright, I'm not getting anything from the containers themselves. Alright, you'll notice that. But I can pick up the stuff that's accumulated on them. Alright, well that's good. Good to know. So you can get some extra items. That's pretty cool. All right, so we're back to our ship, and we haven't had another storm yet, which is really, really odd. So maybe the frequency of the storms is going to diminish here. That would be nice. And now we can fix this with our hermetic seal that we acquired from our travels. And there we go. So the launch thruster is now critically damaged. We need pure ferrite and dihydrogen jelly. So repair launch thrusters with dihydrogen jelly is our first item. How do we get dihydrogen jelly? Very good. Those of you in the back. Excellent. Thank you very much. It is from dihydrogen. How much does it take to make that? Well, if you go here and hover over it, it tells you it takes 40. So I have enough dihydrogen, obviously, to make two of these with a little left over. I just need the one. Dihydrogen jellies, by the way, are also very handy to make something else. That is a life support gel. You need one dihydrogen jelly and 20 carbon. This will recharge your life support to 100% in normal mode. In... Survival mode, it will get you there if you're above, I think, 12%, and in permadeath mode, if you're over 17%, it'll get you fully charged. Just keep that in mind. It changes and makes things more difficult with the, with the modes you go in. So, 20 carbon, 1 dihydrogen jelly will get you a life support gel to charge up your yourself. I'm going to continue to use plants and oxygen if I can. I've got a good amount of oxygen now, condensed carbon, poop. I'm obviously filling my suit, suit with this. Uh, plenty of carbon, got a good amount of sodium. We're getting there. We're getting there with our elements that we really require. Even a little bit of copper, we're going to need more of that later. All right, so let's uh, fix our ship with the dihydrogen jelly. It should kick me right out. Yep. And now it's telling us to repair our launch dressers with pure ferrite. If you have a lot of spare time, you can refine dihydrogen into, into dihydrogen jelly using 30 instead of 40. Ah, Demager, they, they, they've uh, 
they've uh, fixed that. It doesn't work anymore. I'll show you that in just a little bit. It takes two minutes with each one, but you can't get more dihydrogen out of the jellies anymore. They fixed it. Unless they fixed it back, I don't know. But last time I checked, it was still the same. All right. So we need that. It tells us to construct a portable refiner by crafting a metal plate. So let's go back into our menu here. We've got plenty of ferrite to do this. So let's make one metal plate. Running low on, on ferrite. And if we hit our Z button on our keyboard, we're going to get into our build menu. The only thing present is a portable refiner, which requires the metal plate and 30 oxygen. That's why we've been gathering it. It is used in certain recipes. So here's our refiner. We can put it anywhere. You can't put it under your ship. You can put it pretty much anywhere you can put a refiner. There you go. It is down. So to, to enter the refiner, we hit the E button to get inside. We have to fuel it. It requires carbon or condensed carbon to get there. If you put condensed carbon in, it will turn it into regular carbon. I'm going to use a little bit to show you. I'm going to use only six condensed carbon, which charges at almost 25%. Then you go over here, you select this, and what we need to do is make pure ferrite, right? But we don't have enough right now. We only got 16 and I need 50. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so let's look for a rock. Looks like there's a couple right there. That's carbon. Let's try that again. Uh, these little rocks right here. So we need 50. Get them any way you can with any rocks that you can get your mining beam on. Looks like we got it all. I'm going to get some extra because I do need some more. And we're going to show you a little trick in here in just a moment. Oh, that was a bigger rock apparently. Got it. Nice. Alright, got plenty of ferrite now. Let's run over to our refiner. We're going to drop it in here. So we're going to go through our menu. Here's our ferrite dust. Now you can put it all in there if you wish. If you pick up the ferrite dust before you drop it in, if you want to just cut it in half because you don't want to make all that, you can hit your C button, which you see at the bottom it says quick split. splits it in half and only makes a part, part, part of it. Now I can just go ahead and begin if I want and make the pure ferrite, but I only need 50 and I really don't want to take up any more space in my exosuit with items I'm not really going to be needing right away. So I'm going to drop this down to 50 and tell it to begin. It doesn't take long, so I can take about five seconds to make all this. And boom, done. Take the rest of our ferrite dust out and a pure ferrite. Remember all that metal you've been gathering? You can put that in here now, but I'm gonna show you something about the living slime. If you put that in there, it makes runaway mold, okay? We're gonna to get to that in a second. What about the, vis the, the residual goop? Well, it turns into viscous fluids. Let's go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna show you what happens in the end. This is handy for getting early game nanites, if you really, really want to do that. I don't usually do that because I get enough from these broken machineries as we run around and other items in the game, so it's worth it to me just to run around and pick up stuff as we go. I do a lot of that in early game. Now, because this is going to take a little bit, now we're already at 60%. The next round, I'll go ahead and put it all in there, and I'll jump in my ship and recharge. So let's go ahead and get this done. This is good to do early game. Take your time. Don't be too stressed out about what's going on. If there's a storm going, jump in your ship for a little bit. All right, so we're down to 9%. I'm going to go ahead and charge it up with carbon this time and give it up to 100%. We have viscous fluids. Do we have any more in our inventory? No. All right, let's go ahead and make living slime out of it. Remember the living slime we had earlier? So we're going to go ahead and do that. Again, one-to-one -one ratio, it turns into living slime. And while I'm waiting... We're just going to sit and relax. Now, why don't we do this while we're waiting? I'm going to go into the menu with efficiency, and we're going to go ahead and repair our launch thruster or with the pure ferrite. And you hear the music. That music indicates you've completed a milestone, a big task in your, in your game. You can move these around, by the way, by hitting the E button, and you can put them in different spots if you wish. I like to have these guys separated out one above the other and I always like to keep these open over here just in case you have tritium in here tritium is used to um, refuel your pulse drive you'll get that later hang on to it for now and we'll show you what to do with that your multi-tool occasionally you go in here it needs to be charged if you left click on something it'll give you a menu of items you can dump in there I'm gonna go ahead and charge it up with condensed carbon I want it at full 
full conditions here. So you are now repaired. Launch systems online. Exit the ship and collect the portable refiner. So it's making sure you don't leave without it. You need it. So let's jump over here. Check it out. And thank you for all you folks who are joining us today. Really appreciate you being here. Um, again, we're doing a playthrough that's going to be a normal playthrough. We're starting from scratch. We're teaching you how to play No Man's Sky. And this, game, this video, of course, will be present on Twitch for quite some time. So you guys can refer back to it whenever you need to. I'm also going to take it and throw it on my YouTube channel. Again, the link is down below in the bio. Living Slime is what we ended up with, right? So I'm just going to put this in my inventory for a moment. Why? Because I've already got Living Slime in my inventory. These are your three inventories. This is the All Inventory, your Exosuit Inventory, your Ship Inventory. So you can separate between them. I'm going to look for my Living Slime. Now you notice I dropped 60 in there, but I had more. I'm going to take that and put it in here, and it's going to turn into something called Runaway Mold, but it's going to take a full minute to do. So we're going to go ahead and get that started. And I am going to get back in my ship and chill out for a moment. So while we're waiting on that to get done, um, we're going to go back into the menu here. So you have something called a rocket launcher that allows you to obviously shoot rockets while you're battling things or mining. Your photon cannon is used for two different things. It's used obviously as a weapon. You can use it to defend yourself from pirates and other things. You can also use it to shoot at the ground and pick up resources. You can use it to shoot in space at asteroids and pick up resources. You can use it for a great many things. You can't dismantle it unless you have another main weapon on board. This is your main weapon. You can, however, dismantle your rocket launcher. It will give you items. I don't recommend doing it early game. Hang on to it for now. There's no reason to dismantle it for any reason right now. Your shield will also be one of your main things that you'll keep in your ship at all times. You can't see, you can't delete it at all. It protects your ship and sometimes it may need repair. Pulse engine, launch thrusters help you get off the ground, and you are going to have to recharge this. In normal mode, you'll use up 25% every single time you jump off the planet, every time you leave, unless you're on landing pad, and we'll explain that later. Back to your exosuit. You have limited inventory. There's a lot of spots on here that are un undone yet. They're not made up yet, so keep that in mind. I like to reorganize my inventory to put things where they need to be, things I'm just going to hang on to that I know I'm going to use, I put down here, life support gels and stuff like that. Anything I'm going to sell, I put in another spot. I don't have anything in here I'm selling at the moment, so I'm going to hang on to that. And you can get to look at how everything is over here. Same process, move stuff around. I usually take my life support and put it elsewhere, and I'll put, I'll spread them out a little bit in case I get an upgrade, and I'm in a rush and I need to drop the upgrade in real quick. That way everything's separated out and they could be benefited by the upgrades. All right, let's get back out again. Now you remember something else too. I want to show you something real quick quick here. Oh, hang on a second. Marani says, well, I have discovered something I hate about the new space stations because they do not have all three guild. Finding a mercenary guild is a pain in the butt. Yes, I agree. Um, once you find one, uh, as I have, I usually put a... Um, what do you call it? I put a base computer down on a planet nearby and I label it the base as Mercenary Guild or something like that. So I know I can always go back there anytime I want to head to that space station. If we can rename space stations, it would be easier. It would be easier. So yeah, I agree. I agree. That's a pain in the neck. All right, let's check this out. It's been done for quite some time now while we've been yapping. You notice we get Runaway Mold now. What is Runaway Mold good for? Well, we're going to show you. This gives us pure nanites but it's a five to one ratio. So we're gonna have some leftovers and it's only giving us 22, but there are certain things on planets that will give you a lot of runaway mold, something called curious deposits. We will get to that at another time, but when you find those, every time you, you uh, acquire curious deposits, it gives you a lot of runaway mold. And that is, a if you can find a uh, lot of them in one area, Drop a base computer down because that is a very handy place to get some runaway mold from. It does take a while, as you can see, to make it. So if you've got like 9,000 runaway mold in here, it could take upwards of about 15 minutes to burn through it all and make it into nanite clusters. That's 15 minutes real time. So we've got 22 more nanites. We're going to grab it. I'm going to take the leftover runaway mold and I'm just going to put it in my starship for safekeeping. Built a farm over 24 ball. Ooh, that's sweet. I went back to my um, nanite farm, by the way, little little side note, uh, that I had that had about the same, about 20 to 22 of the um, curious deposits. It was down to nine. Most of them are gone. 
And somebody built a base somehow right next to me and blocked them all out. So I had to remove their base in order to get to them. I'm a little bit upset about that. It's not my primary way of getting nanites, but it was a nice to have that little base as a secondary way of getting them. It is what it is. So check out that base if you haven't been to it in a while. Take a look at it with the changeover with worlds. You may not find as many curious deposit balls there. So just a heads up. Just double checked, launched my game, and I was mistaken. It's still 30 for one for dihydrogen to jelly as a refiner, but it's only one minute, not two each time. The exit been back to check, but mine was mostly 15 to 18. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, got to check that out. Let's get in here. We we're talking about the um, the dihydrogen jelly. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to make another one. We have enough to make it. There we go. So it took 40, right? It took 40 units to make one. I had 52. Let's put this in the refiner. Oh, there it is, right there. We get 40 out. Now, if you change your mode, if you go to relaxed mode, it maybe it maybe it'll make you more, but I'm going getting a 40 to 40 output on it right now. So it used to be that it took 30 to 40 to make and you get 10 more out of every single one. So you can make a whole bunch of dihydrogen and keep putting it in to get more dihydrogen out of it and then make more gels and put them back in to get more dihydrogen. It was a great way, but it doesn't work anymore. Put the dihydrogen and refine that into jelly. Okay, let me try it out. I didn't do that yet. It never occurred to me. Here we have 52. We make one. Hold on. And it says 30 to 1. So they did change it. Ooh, sneaky, 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 Demager. Thank you very much for that. That's why I said backseat driving is always permitted. It does take a while. It takes you a full minute now to get that far. Wow. Yeah, that's going to take some time, isn't it? All right, but we're going to show you a couple other things. Again, I haven't had another storm since I've been here, so this is really, really interesting. I can't believe that. That is really, really wild. All right, so it says all systems functional, pick up the portable refiner, but we're too busy right now goofing off. Let us goof off first. If you're short on dihydrogen, though, you can save 25% on it. That is true. That is very true. If you're, But you know, the thing is, is that if I do a scan, I guarantee you, see all the H's that just pop popped up? It is actually faster than to, for me to just run over and grab some. Um, another little thing, if you run out of mining, um, your mining beam is out and you don't have any carbon, you have a button on your keyboard, the Q button, that is a thrust, like that. And you can hit items and pick up a little bit of miner. You have to be close, though. There you go. And you can get some more dihydrogen that way. Same thing with the carbon. So if I need carbon because I need to recharge, I can hit this and pick up carbon. You don't get usually as much as with as you do with a mining beam. There we go. You also have buildings. And this is a side note to some of you guys who have been around a while. Some of those buildings that have the sentinels at them that are protected with a reinforced door. You can actually beat your way through the door that way. It takes you a long time, but you can beat your way through a door to get inside, if you had to. But it's dangerous because the Sentinels get pissed off and they keep shooting at you, so you have to be careful of that. Alright, so this is done finally. We have one dihydrogen jelly, so we will get 40 back out of it. So that gives me 62 now. Well, wait, 52, 72, 72? How much do I have? 73. Okay, that's fine. So we got a good amount of dihydrogen from the stuff I just picked up. Last but not least, you can turn other things into stuff in the portable refiner with your single out, uh, single input unit over here. Uh, cobalt, as an example, turns into ionized cobalt at a 2 to 1 ratio. You might need it later, so keep that in mind. Copper turns into something called chromatic metal. You're going to need tons of this. But hang on to that for now. We're not going to do that right now. Um, the next thing you, you can do, you can turn gold into pyrite, which is good for charging up certain things in your ship. Silver doesn't turn into anything. Oxygen turns into carbon, if you really are desperate for, car for carbon. Condensed carbon turns into regular carbon, but here's your rusted metal. Fecium turns into mordite if you need it. Let me see. Sodium into sodium nitrate. Ferrite dust turns into, into pure ferrite. If you put pure ferrite in here, you get magnetized ferrite at a 2 to 1 ratio. Um, that's handy certain recipes later on. Okay, but here's the thing. Rusted metal. 
You put this in here, 2 to 1 ratio gets you 656 ferrite. That is fantastic. You see it takes 3.5 minutes to do. Why don't we do that real quick? I'm going to use condensed carbon to get that done. And I'm going to walk away. Blind Richie, good to have you here. Thanks for stopping in, my friend. Good, good morning or good afternoon to you, wherever you might be. Or good evening. Regular playthrough, Richie, we're doing, um, like, from start. From the start, and we're showing people how to play No Man's Sky. So, as we look at this environment again, we got plenty of plenty of items to check out. We have something called an organic rock that I wanted to show you earlier. Let me show you what that looks like. And there are items in this game you should never try to pick up. Especially in early game. Later in the game, if you want to do it, if you have good weapons and good armor and stuff like that, that's great. But early game, no. I have a plant here I'm going to grab real quick because I my life support could use a little bit of a boost. You'll get a various amount from every plant, like this time I got eight. And if I go in here and eat that, there, 77% of my life support now. That's awesome. So we want to check out this organic rock while that is working over there, our refiner. This is what they look like. And if you stand near it, it tells you you're going to get chlorine out of it. Now, if sentinels are present on this planet and you try to pick that up, it's going to... they're going to attack you. Okay, so try not to. Chlorine at one time was a very valuable commodity and was worth a lot. They have since nerfed it, and it's not worth anywhere near as much. So, yes, finding this early game back in the day was fantastic, but it's really not necessary to get it. This won't hurt you. There's another item called Sac Venom that is very dangerous to pick up. I will just warn you ahead of time. Get some more ancient data structure. I must have missed one over there, I'm guessing. So, let me see what else we got around here I could take a look at. It's more Fireberry. I'm going to go ahead and grab it because I'm going to need the food. There we go. All right. Cargo drop. Let's go ahead and grab that, too, while we're here. I'd show you the salvaged stuff, but it's uh, buried, and I can't get to it. Let's grab some sodium. Always grab plants as you can early game. Um, this just looks like a... Okay, we got two of these. Let's go ahead and grab them. And we're going to get some condensed carbon out of them. And that uh, requires an atlas pass. We can't do anything with it. Again, grab the resources while you can early game. It's a very good way to go. Good to have you here again, Richie. Thank you very much for joining us. And all you other folks who have uh, started watching the stream, I really appreciate it. Feel free to follow if you like. Uh, most of what I do is over on YouTube. I will be live on YouTube this Wednesday night for a stream. I'm not sure what we'll be up to, but I have a funny feeling, hint, hint, that the expedition's going to drop. There's our hazardous plant. We're going to go ahead and grab that for oxygen. Gone. Okay, good. And we're going to start heading back to the ship. It's been a few minutes. I'll grab the sodium on the way. There we go. Anything else along the way? We've got sweet root. I don't know what that does. I don't know if it's hazard protection, but some of the plants give you hazard protection. Let's check. Good. 10% hazard protection. So, if you find yourself low on sodium and batteries, you can use this... There you go. You get our hazard protection back up. So again, the plants on a planet are very, very worth getting early game to help you out. Okay, looks like it's finally finished. Didn't run out of, out of gas doing it. We now have a abundance of ferrite dust from all the stuff we picked up. And I don't think there's really anything else we want to do in here right now. So we're going to go ahead and pick it up and get out of here. Look at all that ferrite. That's excellent. We do need more, but we'll hold off on that. This is a good time to separate out your inventories. We're not going to use cesium and wandering around, so let's put it in the ship. Um, or the gold or the silver. So I'm going to put that on my ship. Quick um, hits. If you pick something up, you'll notice here it says X gives you the starship. So that's a very quick transfer. You can also just drop it in in one way or the other. So if I pick this up normally, I can just move it to a different slot. If you hit the X button, it will give you the option to drop it at someplace else. I'm going to hang on to that, obviously. Copper, I'm going to go ahead and put in my ship too, because I don't normally need it in wandering around. But the food, I'm going to hang on to. 
Uh, I like to keep the condensed carbon and carbon together. So you're gonna do a, we're gonna do a little OCD here. Um, we're gonna keep the blue guys together. I'm gonna switch places with them. Ferrite I like to line up next to each other. Sodium and sodium nitrate I keep together, and oxygen I keep separate. So there you go. So good time to rearrange your inventory. If you pick up the refiner, you notice it says use the center mouse button, the scroll button to pick it up. And now get it. Anything that's in its inventory, you will get with it. So we got the carbon, we got that. If something had just been processed, we'll pick that up too. So a little, th little thing to help you out. All right, so we're done here. All systems functional, return to your ship. Pay attention to what it tells you to do. Seek answers among the stars, use W to take off. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the W, hold it down, and we're launching. I personally don't like first person view unless I need to be doing something with the ship's computers and stuff like that, I need to see the coordinates or something along those lines. I always go into my menu, over to settings, and it immediately comes up to switch starship view and I set that to a hotkey of number one. That's just me. I prefer to do it that way. So now we got a third person view from behind the ship. I like to see everything around me. This gives you the opportunity to, to scan around and look at stuff. Looks like we got some plants down there. Some more of those organic rocks. There's some of those solar vines we were talking about. This thing doesn't hover. It can go at a very slow rate. So those are solar vines. We can't pick them up ourselves. And you can see a lot of the landscape this way. This is a good way to find stuff on the planet while you're going. Now a little piece of information not too many people know from the beginning. No Man's Sky and the planets that they, uh, the planets that we have are built on something called ley lines. So as you fly across a section, if you find a building, like if I do a scan from here, it will normally find me a building and put a little building icon over it. I'm going to do it again from a different direction. And it's going to call me a liar now. I know there's a building over here. Sometimes it doesn't show you the buildings. Ah, there's one right there. Where'd it go? It's just there a second ago. There it is. Okay, there we go. This is an unknown building. So we can land here and check it out if we want. It is a drop pod and I'm very, very much tempted on repairing myself. I'm not going to do it. But something about No Man's Sky is something called ley lines. They like to build all the items on a particular latitude or longitude going across the planet. So if we head directly south from here and we do another scan, it's not going to show up right now because this planet the way it is and we're going to have trouble finding stuff. But if we continue to head in a particular direction, normally we will find more of those items in that direction. See? And it's a good way to find buildings and stuff like that that you're looking for. This happens to be a nice building layout there. It's got a landing pad. Let's teach you a little something about landing pads while we come in here. If it turns green, you can land at it. Choose your E button, you will land there. The best part about landing at one of these landing pads is that you don't use any launch thrusters when you take off. It's launch assisted. So that, if you look over here, the 25% I have left won't get used up. So this gives you an opportunity to land somewhere and check out your surroundings. Now this is kind of a dangerous building because it's got sentinels around it. This right here is called a sentinel quad. He's not gonna attack us right now because he's just checking things out. He's a little bit fidgety. Kind of like a, uh, I don't know, Chihuahua or something. I don't know. A little nervous there. Anyway, so he's blue. He's good to us right now. If I attack him, he will attack back, and these are dangerous. These are probably the harder ones to, to, to fight because they like to charge you to run into, and they shoot a laser beam that's like a mining beam that just continually shoots at you the whole time, and it will track you wherever you go. So be careful with these guys. Um, you've got a couple other sentinels here, which if we look through here, we should see them. There's one over there in red. Let's go ahead and check it out. This, by the way, is a save point. You will get three things from this. It'll save your game, of course. It'll give you a navigational data, which you do need early game, and it will give you 10 nanites for finding the location. There it is, and there's our 10 nanites. So by all means, and sometimes it has some broken stuff around it and some cargo containers you can pick up. Not always. So let's head out. So this is just a standard building here. Nothing special going on. Um, it's not abandoned or anything like that. God knows where the door is. <laughs> the door could be anywhere. It's somewhere on the outside of the building. I know, I know, sorry. 
This, by the way, this little half moon shaped thing will also protect you from the elements. As you can see, and recharge your hazard protection even in the middle of a storm. I'm going to pick up something from there. You know, sodium nitrate. Nice. And there's usually one over here. Okay. And this is our entrance. You notice it's reinforced. We can't go in. It won't let us. We had a bolt caster we could break in. But that will attract the sentinels. There is one over here. Let me see where is he at. Wow, he just kind of wandered forever away. Ooh, we got another building in the distance. This is an icon of a building which you will be able to pick up. Usually at a decent distance away. 630 is pretty stinking good. We got another one over here at 475. More damaged machinery as we take a look around. Another building over here. This is fantastic. I wish I was in a permadeath run because this would be very, very happy for me. Standard operating procedure, it's always on the other side. It always seems that way, my friend. Yes, I agree. Let's check out the uh, Sentinel real quick. He won't attack us, so we'll just check him out. There we go. This happens to be a healing unit right here. And they float around and check things out. They don't really attack you. Okay. So nothing special. I want to show you one other thing, too. Um, we've been scanning animals and stuff like that. If we go into our escape menu and go to discoveries... It will always come up on the planet you're at. And you'll notice that we have five of the six fauna discovered here. It means five of the six animals. If you select that, it'll tell you what animals you found. It will also tell you what you haven't found. It won't give you a picture. It won't tell you the name, but it'll tell you where you can find them. This one is a rare creature. Supposedly, it's underground. So we want to look in caves, right? If you can get all of them, you get a, you get a, a nanite bonus, if you will. You only get like 10 or 15 nanites per creature found, even if you upload them but you get more if you can find all of them on a planet. That has always been one of my big things. I try to do that. Never a front parking space, never a front space parking place. Yes, I agree 100%. It will never do that. All right. Most of these buildings that you find on the surface that you can land at will have a cave nearby. Almost always. Not all the time, but most of the time. I like to check out the caves. Sometimes they don't go in very deep. Sometimes they do. Sometimes you can't get in them. So be careful that you can get in and get out. But because it, this is close to the surface, very, every now and then the um, underground creature will appear near the entrance and run around for a little bit. So stick around for a little while if you have the time to do so and see if you can get that sixth or last animal. They're a little bit rare, but that's okay. Yeah, this one goes in a little deeper, but it seems to be kind of bare of anything. You don't have any stalactites and stalagmites. This is an odd occurrence. But stabilizing. So we can go in here and check things out. Doesn't seem to be anything here. The, what we look for is if a creature does pop up, we'll get a red dot, obviously, and then we can go scan them. I'm on a mission to find the sixth creature because I didn't realize we had five of the six, that we'd nearly acquired all of them. And having those extra nanites early game, very, very handy. We do have some deposits that we could get if we had a terrain uh, manipulator, if we could pick it up, but we can't. I'm going to take one other, one other look in this direction, see if anything shows up. If you stay near buildings, sometimes these ships will land. They're traders, and they'll drop in and land next to you, and you can trade with them. Uh, you can sell what items you've got, but the only other things you can purchase are upgrades for nanites. Another reason to get those. Knowledge stones. We haven't touched on those. That one's pretty far away. Do we have one closer? I don't see any. Yeah, I'll go check it out, I guess. Since we have a couple moments, let's go ahead and check it out. I'll highlight it. Knowledge stones teach you the language of the culture that is on this planet. So, Viking, Gek, Corvax, it'll teach you a word of that, of that culture. I'm going to go ahead and head... I'm going to try to head over there, if it'll let me. And as we go, we're going to pick up resources. I'm not going to use my ship because against the launch thrusters, even though I'm not using any while I go, um, still, you have to use launch thrusters. And this gives me an opportunity to pick up things on the way. Okay, sometimes these yellow containers don't have anything in. That's okay. Any questions? By all means, ask questions, folks. That's why we're here. We have a lot of backseat drivers here, too. So the backseat drivers are always permitted on my streams. I can't tell you how many things I've forgotten on the way, and they have mentioned. 
already demonstrated that a couple times today. The more words you learn, the better you will understand the aliens. This is absolutely 100% true. Get as many words as you can. All right, here's our knowledge stone. This is what they look like. <clears throat> they look like this. This time, we're in a Gex system, obviously. Visions of Gex. So if we, the first time you hit one of these, it does this. It gives you that. Alna, alna, alna. Muse, muse, muse. I have no idea what they're saying. The stone resonates, producing a sound that fills my mind. A vision begins to take shape. A small alien life form kneels before me. They are tired, beaten. Without meeting my gaze, they offer up their hand. So we accept the knowledge. The name Gek floats in my vision. An echo of the strange vision I just experienced. A word in this alien tongue is seared into my brain. That will happen on each of the three main species that you have. The Gek, the Corvax, and the um, Viking. So the first time you hit one of these, you'll get the same exact kind of communication, and it will teach you Gek, Viking, Corvax. Every other knowledge stone you hit thereafter will just teach you a word in passing. So as you pass, you just kind of select it, go around in a circle while you're running, and it will get that for you. You also get words by talking to aliens in space stations. Space stations, landing pads, at some of the facilities you go into, um, if there's a inhabitant there, they will give you more words to learn as well. You can learn from them. Don't upset them. Okay, so we're going to head back to the ship now. Try to do as much walking and running as possible. Try not to use your ship early game. Later on, you could you'll have the resources to be able to blow, and you can recharge your um, uh, launch thrusters and pulse drive and everything like that on a regular basis. You can see I'm gathering resources as I go because I really do need it. I do need more carbon. The longer you hold down your mining beam, by the way, if you look at the top right, you'll notice that it's getting to a point where it's overheating. The hotter it gets, the faster it'll it'll mine the resources. See, it turns red, and you'll get an overheat icon in the center of your screen. You'll get more quicker by doing it this way, by trying to keep it as hot as possible for a little while longer. So let go for just a second, go back in, hit those items up. Okay. I think I just accidentally picked up salt. Maybe not. So we're going to use some of this. One, two, three, and four. Good. Let's get our life support back up, too. Excellent. We haven't had to use any life support gels. It's pretty cool. Still, no storms. Very, very odd. Another thing you can look at in regards to the planet, when you go into your discovery section, it'll show you where you are on the planet itself. So this tells us that this has two moons to this planet, and we are kind of in the southern hemisphere. So if you're doing any searching for stuff, heading north might not be a bad idea. It also shows that we don't have any water on the planet. I have yet to be spawned on a planet with water unless it's an expedition. Keep that in mind. Your navigation data that you get, by the way, another tidbit of information, this here, navigation data. Um, highly portable data unit contains all the relevant uh, cartographical information for a planetary region. Uh, may be exchanged for star charts in the space station. That's great. There's another use for them. Next to the ship on a landing pad is this little device here calling your starship. If my starship is someplace else and I've run to this building, I can call it in using this. As long as it has enough thruster juice on board, or it's on a landing pad elsewhere, it will be pulled towards you. Keep that in mind. If you don't have enough thruster juice inside, calling it, you can call it all day long. It'll tell you, nope, you're going to have to head back to your ship the old-fashioned way. Done that many times. Plus, you get a journey milestone as you collect things like words. That's true. You do get that. That is absolutely true. Also, if you're on low hazard protection and don't have a lot of sodium and you're in storm but can't find a cave, your digger module on your multi-tool can make a temporary underground shelter until the storm passes. This is correct. But this point in the game, if you look at my multi-tool, you do not have the digger option. You do not have that terrain manipulator. So you won't be able to dig a hole. Use your ship. Try, to, try not to go far away. Uh, let's see here. I cannot count the amount of times on stormy planets I've just dug my way between buildings completely underground. I've done that on the really bad planets, like the extreme weather planets. 
I've done that many times just to get that, uh, the, what do you call it, the achievement of spending days on planets. We've got a building there. We had another building nearby. It was like 600 units away that way. We're going to do the call-in unit. So let's head towards this one. Hopefully it's a building that has, a, that's an actual building that has a landing pad. And I'm going to do the hop skip. You notice when I hit my jetpack, it uses more energy. Okay, so keep that in mind. Early game, grab your metal. You always get it from a green box. We got dihydrogen this time. Okay, keep going. I'm not going to hit the plant. So you can hit your jetpack and it'll boost you up. Okay, we keep doing that. It boosts us up. Okay, it helps you on drops to get softer landings. If you land too far, it will hurt you. Then you'll get damaged. Sometimes damaging parts of your exosuit that you'll have to repair. Now, you notice that thrust we were talking about earlier when you do that to break things. If you can time it right and do the thrust at the same time you hit your jetpack, usually it's one to one. You hit your thrust and then you hit your jetpack. You will do what's called a thrust jump. I know. Not a very, uh, Whoa, almost ran right into that plant. Okay. I know, not the most cla uh, greatest name in the world, but it works. Okay, this is not a building with a landing pad. We'll show you this in just a moment. So as you run, thrust and jump. And you'll get a boost that'll boost you forward real quick. And keep you close to the ground. This here is a plaque. You will find them on all the worlds. They look a little different. But there'll be Gek, Viking, and Corvax plaques. This is a way to get information. As I convulse, as I reach out and touch the beautiful stone marker, it always tells you a story, and everyone will be different until you get all of them. My mind filling with the deadly knowledge of the true history of the Gek. We are the masters of galaxies, the overlords of the cosmos. Each foe will submit with bended knee to the almighty Gek dominion. They were a warring race at one point. We are the first spawn. Look upon our works in despair. So we can get three things here. We can leave, of course. But the two we have is seek help with language or seek knowledge of the past. Knowledge of the past will just give us information. It'll give us another word or two. Help with language, usually find another spot we can go to to get stuff. And I'll show you that. So let's hit number one. It just increases our knowledge. In this case, it's not going to find us. In this case, it's not giving us anything more but words. So we probably should have chose the other one. No big deal. All systems functional. It keeps telling us where to go. More ships. That is a hauler and a, another hauler. Actually, there's two haulers, two different types. Fascinating. I like the wings on the hauler, the left one. Anyway, let's head over to this building now and see if we can finally find a landing pad. I can show you how that works. Now you notice my life's, my, my hazard protection is going down. I'm going to do a quick look through here, and I see I've got some sweet root, which will give me hazard protection boost. So let's head over there. Uh, to complete the achievement, you need to spend 12 real-world hours on total, in total on an extreme storm planet. I know this from exhaustive experience. Yes, yes. And you're going to get that as you go along. As you're searching planets and looking for stuff, and you get better protection and blah, 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 you'll actually be shocked at how much time you end up spending on those planets over, over the course of things. So you can get it few hundred hours into the game just by regular gameplay however if you really want to do it right build yourself a um a base real quick on one of those planets four walls and a door with a with a roof and just stick yourself inside and walk away go to the bathroom take a break watch a movie <laughs> put down the rover it looks like a bug with four pads put all the protections parking on an extreme wall get in walk away you will have the extreme achievement and take no damage. Same thing. Same thing. Ah, these blue plants here. Let's go ahead and recharge our hazard protection at 25%. And this time we're going to use one of our batteries. Oink. There you go, 100%. These blue flowers here are deuterium rich. What is that? Deuterium is what charges your jetpack. So if you use that and use your thrust jump, you'll get a temporary... Not insanity. Uh, a temporary invincibility or unlimited ammo, if you will, unlimited charge to your jetpack. But it only lasts for a few seconds. So if I choose that, 
and do the jump surge, you look at the bottom right, my jetpack isn't showing. And you just keep going. It's a great way to search planets, and after a little bit, it fades and your jetpack gets used. So stay close to the ground if you can. So this does not have a landing pad either. It is just a landing area. So we're going to go ahead and take the save chart, and we'll check resources while we're here. The hydrogen. And, oh, we got a microprocessor out of that. That's good. And I don't think we'll be able to pick this up, but I'm going to try again. No, we can't. Okay, moving on. And this thing. Maybe we'll get an upgrade. Ah, I'm going to get rid of my residual goop for now. I've already showed you how that works. Setting out 8,000 units. Achievement number one made. And what did we get? I think we just got nanites out of that, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we did. So here's our microprocessor. Very handy unit to have. We got a dihydrogen gel from one of the items, and I'm going to turn that into a life support gel in case we need it. Okay, so this gives us hazard protection. We can use that later. We do need life support. Let's take another look around. We got another building over here, 322 units away. There are buildings all over the place. Good grief. Let's head over there. Maybe we can find our underground creature as well. You do a lot of searching on your first planet. You do want to find a better planet at some point. Oop, got a cave, I think. Yes, we do. Ah, there's one of those hazardous plants again. And we got some cobalt and stuff like that. I'm going to hold off going down in there this time, though. Okay, let's head out. I'm going to do a thrust jump as we run out of the juice for our running. Let it charge up for just a couple seconds. And start running again. Press jump. Oh, got a fireberry. Good. That'll give us life support. I'll grab that. Oh, doesn't look like a building again. Looks like we got... Is this the same place? I don't know if it's the same place or not. We'll find out in a moment. Yeah, it's a different place. So we get more of the story. As I touch the obelisk, images of the planet's ancient past flood my mind. The terrible beginnings of the Gek have been absorbed by this strange stone, and their tale seems desperate to escape. All who hear our words might uh, know of our might. Those who oppose us are broken to our will. Behold the power of the Gek first spawn. Sorry, the sentinel threw me off there. Galaxies lie at our feet. We are eternal. So we did language first. Let's do knowledge of the past. And it does a pullback. So again, we can see buildings around us. There's our ship all the way over there on the right. Historical data revealed, and it's going to show us where we can find that. Over there. How far away is it? If we look at it, it'll take us a half hour walking to get there. We might just be taking our ship. There's a sentinel. These are the sentinel guys that pop up after your second day on a planet um, from the get-go, from the beginning. Subsequent planets you go to may have sentinels popping up immediately. But this is what the sentinels look like. They usually won't bother you too much on most planets. Now, if you go to a planet that says aggressive sentinels, they'll attack you on sight. Okay, another building right over there. We're going to keep going building to building. This is actually fun. I can't believe we're finding all this. It is just absolutely incredible. And sooner or later, we'll be able to pull our ship in. Uh, let's see here. The base didn't count for me either, which is why I did the... Oh, really? It did not work with having the four walls. Okay. Digging into the ground, though, will do the same effect, folks. I know that for a fact. If you dig down into the ground with your terrain manipulator, or just dig a small little mini cave for yourself, that'll have the same effect. I have done that many a time, and it has worked for me. I'm going over here to grab the sodium, in case you're wondering. Get close enough. You don't have to remain focused on it. Just go ahead and grab it. Thrust jump, thrust jump, thrust jump. Ow, see? They hit the ground too hard there. If you check your exosuit, you just want to make sure nothing got damaged. And it looks like my life support's dropping, so I'm going to pick up this. Get my life support up to snuff. Let's go ahead and get this recharged up to 100. Okay. And keep going. A couple more ships flew over. No traders dropped in, so that's good. Okay. Your... Exosuit inventory, another thing too, uh, in normal mode, it'll carry up to 9,999 of any particular item. 
and that will allow you to carry quite a bit with you. If you start going into other modes, harder mode survival drops that down to 500, which is extreme, and your permadeath mode drops you to 300 in this area. So keep that in mind. Permadeath is exactly like it sounds. If you die, the game is deleted and it is no it will no longer exist. So be careful. This is a communication tower. Comms towers, we just call it very easily. Let me take a boost over to it and you can see what I'm talking about. And you climb ladders to get up there. You can use your jetpack if it's strong enough. We're not going to be using that yet. But we're going to go ahead and hit our save point. We're going to hit this thing and get some stuff out of it. As far as I know, only the bug one nomad works. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. If you look at the POI directly, not only does it say it's 30 minutes away, but at the top of the screen it says how many units away. Very good point. Let's show you that real quick. So you look there, 29, 26, and then look all the way at the top, at your top bar. It'll tell you 7,404 steps away, if you will. That is a long walk. This, by the way, these are life support units. Um, if you have yourself damaged really bad and you've lost a plus sign at, or two, which we call hearts, this will recharge those. Very handy to use those. I'm going to leave them untouched for now. Looks like we got some buildings I can use here, but here's the call-in unit I was talking about. So I can now call in my ship and it will just appear. And now I have my ship near me. And as always, I'm going to go ahead and check out each of these units and see if there's anything side I can use. I can't use the chairs, but that's okay. I can recharge while I'm in here. I'm going to do the same thing over here. We'll get our specimen. And there you go. My Gek rank. My reputation has gone up. I'm going to extract some nanites from this. You always get nanites. Usually more than 50 and usually not as many as like about 120, 130. So finally, we're going to hit the damaged machinery that's over here. Not all these places have it. I'll, oh, rusted metal that time. I'll grab it. The save is deleted. Oh my gosh, did I say game? I apologize. I meant the save is deleted. Doesn't delete No Man's Sky. My severe, sincere apologies. <laughs> yep, it just wipes out your operating system and does a uh, delete C on your computer. <laughs> no. I received the third drops. So I'd like to share random information. That's no problem. Third drops are out. That's great. Wouldn't that be awful? You die once in a permadeath and it deletes the entire game and, and, and Windows. Um, and especially make it wrong because it's the fourth. I gotcha. Yeah, that is why I mentioned it for the new. Very good, Marani. Thank you very much for that. Uh, could you imagine deletes the game and you have to rebuy it? <laughs> Meanwhile, Sean is just throwing money up in the air and laughing hysterically at himself. Uh Good grief. Uh, again, damn it, we have buried tech that we cannot get. It's so annoying. All right, do we have any buried tech around here? 251. I want to see if there's one here. I want to at least show it one time. 332. Okay, let's go to that one over there real quick. I just want to show you this real fast. I'm going to get there as quickly as I can. As fast as you can, as fast as I can. You got it. Oh, I'm running right through rocks. That's fantastic. Alright, so there's one right here. It's buried in the ground. I probably won't be able to get to it. Um, Jeez, how far down is that? Of course, I can't get to it. It's way down there. Yeah, that, that, and that. I'll grab those. Get another dihydrogen jelly. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. It's literally right underneath me. Let me select it, you piece of work here. One unit away, I can nearly scratch at with 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 my hands. <laughs> All right, I guess not. It is literally. I'm standing right on top of it. That is hilarious. All right. Well, I'm not going to bother with that at this point. Let's go ahead and head back to the ship. That has definitely been nerfed a little bit, because that's really good early game money. Those things are worth a lot. 
Was there a cave near here, by the way? I don't think so. Is there? I saw some... What do you call it? Uh, subterranean relics like there, but I still don't see any of the uh, other guys. All right, let's head over to the treasure. We're going to take off. Now, something you can do, your, your launch thrusters do need charging on occasion, and you can make those. Um, let me show you this. Here's the Starship launch fuel. It'll charge it up to 100%. You need dihydrogen and a metal plate to make it. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to make one of these, and we'll charge it after we get it down to zero. It's fixed a large number of input bugs that were when using touchscreen interfaces such as Steam Deck or Switch in the patch notes. But, yeah, maybe? I don't know. Let me see here. That's a new CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike game. It destroys your PC if you fail. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a mentor in, in Final Fantasy XIV. And new players to games can get that confused on wording, so I mentioned it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Marani. What if that's nerfed until you get a terrain manipulator? It's possible. That's a good point, Psy Spam. I haven't tried it yet. It was nerfed by fixed a large number. That's true to make it. It still works around 30% of the times. More often on the bones as they are close to the surface. Okay. We're going to check it out. All right. So let's take off. And we're going to head towards that treasure. Yep. It just popped up on my screen. It's telling me where to go. Like my wife. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see here. So it doesn't look like it's going to take long regular time. 30 seconds. We'll stay... We'll stay in low orbit, you know, just above the ground. We won't go out to space to get there. I don't want to hit those achievements yet because we do need to seek answers from the stars, and that's our next step. So we're going to head in this direction. If you stay closer to the ground, you can make out a lot more features. Sometimes you'll pick up buildings. If you scan like we've been doing on occasion, you'll see the houses pop up like that, and you can slow down and take a look at it. Yeah, that is a... Uh, a small tower there that helps you find settlements. Either a very large one or minor, one of the two. Weird depressions in the ground can sometimes contain things, so look for them. Sometimes you might even find another crashed ship. Alright, so this is the spot. So this is an ancient burial area. Let's come into a landing here. One of the abnormal features of this section You'll notice that, let me just go over here real quick, okay, bottom left you'll see that my shield protection is dropping because of the heat, but for some reason these buried areas like this, as you get closer, are a protected zone, you see, and it's suddenly it's back at maximum, and it's gone away, even if a storm is brewing, and out there it will protect you this is a really good place to maybe even create a base if you really want to so you're protected from the elements on nasty systems now what you're looking for in this section here is you're looking for something called a large artifact crate it is always in this general area next to this broken arch and this this line in the ground here this piece of uh, uh, of old stuff it was right down here in order to break open to that crate, you need a terrain manipulator and you'll need some ancient keys. I can't get any of those right now because none of those things are present. Like, for instance, artifact fragment, artifact fragment, those are what you're looking for. Artifact fragment down there. You'll get keys from each one of these little chests and then you can dig down and get the large crate. Because I can't dig yet, it's useless to me. So I will leave this alone for now. And we'll worry about it later. Okay. And maybe we'll come back to this planet if we stay in the system for a while. All right. Let's head out. So we're going to go out into space like it's telling us to, finally. So it's telling us I'm in the Euclid galaxy and what system I'm in. Two planets, two moons. And now it's telling us to make sure we test our systems here. So, test flight controls and thrust. So, we're just going to hit the W to start with. That's just giving us a boost. The one should pop up any second. There it goes. you got to do it for a certain amount of time. Now it tells us to do the, the real boost, which is holding down our shift button, which makes us go faster. In case you're wondering, if you look at the speed on the left, it's a lot faster in space than it would be on a planet. 
the 365, I'll hit the thrusters. It boosts me up to about 2,2600 on this ship. Some ships will be faster, especially with upgrades. Okay? And then finally, pulse engines. If we hit the pulse engine, we will hold down the space bar. And now we're pulsing. Don't ask me what speed we're going. But it's very fast. Okay, back to first person view. Now we're getting a message. If you hit your X button on your, you go into this menu down here, which has settings and other stuff, you're going to be going to your Starship Communicator. Entry 4925B, incoming transmission source 4925B. Please identify yourself. I'm psst. So we can identify ourselves or ignore them. I'm going to be polite. Identify myself. You are not psst, alone. Follow the pst. The broadcast ends as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. So we're going to input the planetary and put that data right now. So there we go. So we've got coordinates. We're going to be heading to where it's telling us to go. Again, it's teaching you how to play. It just doesn't teach you everything. It's sending us, it looks like, back to the same planet that we just came from, unfortunately. While you're here, if you go into first person view, it's easier. Look at these planets here and study them and see if there's a decent planet here. This is a moon. Bubbling indicates it's hot. So we're back to the same situation there. It looks like there's a planet down here that may be another moon. Nope, that's a planet. Scan that one. Flame ruptured. Another hot planet. What is with the planets in this section? So there's only two planets, but there's two moons. If you look at the planet right here, it's right present right in the middle of our screen right there, especially on our radar down below. You'll see that there seems to be something else behind it. So rather than go there real quick, I'm just going to go around the planet real fast. I want to check out the second moon and see if we got a halfway decent world we can set up a base on. Because God knows we don't want to set it up on a hot planet. It should be far enough. Oh, nope, just seeing it. Okay, let's go a little further out. And that should be good. So there's the other moon. Let's see what it's got. A rotting moon. Salvageable scrap. I don't know what's better, the rotting moon or the uh, hot planets. So if you aim your, your receptacle, you can just about see it. It's kind of hazy on mine. You can see that there's a, a round circle. I mean, the one that I'm moving around with my mouse, but there's also another one superimposed on your windshield. If you keep that aimed towards where you're going, it should lock in on it. And when you pulse drive there, it'll stay locked in and it will guide your ship to it. That's usually a good idea to do that as well. See, I'm not controlling it. And now we're heading towards it. Okay, I'm back to third person because that's what I prefer. And we're coming in. I've never seen a starting system that didn't have a paradise planet in the system. Yeah, well, maybe that's one of the changes they've made. But again, there's only two planets in this entire system. I'm used to starting in systems that have at least four or more, but it is what it is. You have now. <laughs> Indeed. Again, if you've got questions, folks, if you've never played No Man's Sky and you have questions, please drop them in here. All right. So it tells us this is an approximate location that we should look around. I'm going to give you a little treat here. If we go to first person view, if it's a ship that we're aiming for, it'll appear on the radar. It's not a ship. We're looking for some kind of a uh, landing location. So if I hit the C, you see there's one right there. Okay, let's pan around and just see. We'll do another scan. There's one further out that way. So go over here. We're going to go in thirds and scan again. There's one over that way. Those are pretty far away, though. My guess is it's this close one right here. So I'm going to try landing next to it. Okay, now that we're landing, we're going to show you something over here. Now, remember, my launch thrusters are empty now, which is why I made this launch fuel. Don't forget to recharge your launch fuel. You're going to need it. Let's get out. Now, we're looking for the signal source. It tells us to use our visor. Visor. If we hit the F button, it tells us it's right here. So I guessed properly. And there you are. So we're going to head towards that. As usual, early game, we're going to pick up our save and chart. We're going to pick up items along the way. We don't need that. Damage container. We'll grab the metal out of it. And there we go. 
Okay. And we got a, uh, got this guy scanning everything, including us. All right. So let's head over to this and do what it's telling us to do. The sparking wires of the machine generate a signal, tapping out its broadcast into the void. Whoever left the message is long gone. So we're going to decipher the signal. Decoding. 16, 16, 16. That's present in, uh, throughout the whole game. You're going to get used to that. Entry 4925C. No fuel in something. Failed to reach station. Hazard protection low. No choice to bzz, underground bzz, deployed base computer. As well as the log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. That's what we've been looking for, the terrain manipulator. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. Extract the plans. There's our first item, made with chromatic metal. And there's our second item, terrain manipulator. Need two carbon nanotubes and a dihydrogen jelly. Good thing we found one. Hang on to everything. All right, so we can do the terrain manipulator now. Let's get that moving along. I want to install that something bad, so I'm going to put it over here. Uh, let's go ahead and put it with the dihydrogen jelly. Switch over to your exosuit and build two metal plates. I meant carbon nanotubes. Well, now I have an extra metal plate in my inventory that I don't need, but that's okay. It's okay. We'll be using it later. There we go. All right. So now we have a terrain manipulator. Terrain manipulators are recharged with um, ferrite dust, the different various versions of it, or silicate that you get from the planet itself. For instance, if I switch to my terrain manipulator and I hit the ground, I'm going to get something called silicate powder. Hang on to a full stack of that. You'll be able to use it, a few hundred of it at least. And you can now dig into the ground. If you don't like your digging, you want to build instead, you hit your center mouse button, and now you can make deposits. If you don't like those and you want to flatten them out, you have a flattening tool that allows you to flatten. Again, hit your center mouse button. that allows you to flatten. And if you made a hole you didn't intend, you also have a refill button. And we can refill the holes we made. There we go. So, and then back, one more click brings you back to regular. It doesn't teach you that in the game. That looks like the tiniest cave I've ever seen in my life. Very depressing. Okay, so we're going to take this. Ah, remember that buried technology that we can't, we can't get to? Now we can. Back up a little bit, go down on an angle. Dig a hole, and there's our buried tech. Let's pick it up. You'll get anywhere between two and four of them. One. Looks like I'm just going to get two this time. There we go. That salvage data is very valuable. So, I'm going to refill this, because I don't like leaving a hole, and there we go. All right, and we'll switch back to regular. Now, this is why it's so valuable. Two of those are worth 104000 for 50000 for each of these, 52000 actually. They are very valuable. You also use them in the Anomaly Space Station in order to trade up for stuff and to get certain items. So hang on to them if you can. Try not to spend them. All right. Back to the ship. We need copper. It says we have 41 of 60. We need to find more copper. So, back to scanning. And it's actually helping us out. You'll see that it's got arrows and it's showing us where all the deposits are that are close by. That it can pick up. 232, 847, even 1,000 clicks away. And that one's 583. Obviously, we're going to head to the close one. There's one more over here. 831. Okay, so we're going to head to that one. Let's go ahead and head out. Any comments, everybody? Uh, anybody got questions? Anybody else want to assist? Anything I'm missing? I forgot. Oh, that must be my step milestone. 10,000 kilometers run. So I'm up to two stars on my walking. Made that achievement a long time ago. Your achievements carry through to other saves, by the way. So this is copper. This is a good deposit of copper. This means it's solid. We do not see any cracks. I mean, you've got cracks in here, but if you had cracks that were interspersed with silicate, it would make it look dirty. That means it's not a pure deposit. You're not going to get as much out of it. Your mining, pardon me, your terrain manipulator has three settings. It starts off in a medium setting. If you hit your R button, it makes it smaller. If you hit the T button, it makes it bigger. 
There you go. This is for digging that hole that you want to get someplace. So you have a tunnel to lead somewhere. Medium to pick up medium items. And then finally, small to pick up more items. When you're, when you're picking up or mining um, deposits like this, keeping it smaller is better. You will pick up more as you go. You Thunder, thank you for stopping in and saying hello. Good to see you, you beautiful person, you as well. 07. Just enjoying the refresher course. It's what I imagine mon monitoring a college class is like. Indeed, indeed. I do like to teach, so. So, good to have you guys here. So, we're going to continue to pick up this copper. We need a bunch of it. It tells us we only needed, like, another 20. But you know what? Get it all while you can. Get it all while you can. And, again, go with the smallest setting because you will pick up more resources this way. You will intersperse every now and then. You'll hit the edge and you'll pick up some silicate powder. That's fine. You need it to recharge this anyway, so just grab it. Oink. By the way, physics don't always work in this game. It will have sometimes, like for instance, if I go over here. I've got a floating piece of copper right there that is defying gravity in physics as we know it. That happens. Not everything's perfect in this game, especially the physics, but it, it does a pretty good job of it. Otherwise, it's just fun to screw around with. Maybe we'll do another freighter jump. We'll see. And our thermal protection is falling rather drastically. I'm going to keep gathering this copper. You are going to need a lot of that chromatic metal as time goes by. But you also need copper in its raw form as well for certain items. So gather up a bunch of it, turn some of it into chromatic metal, turn the rest of it into other stuff. I finished the Sentinel Monitoring Station's kitchen and living space. Feel free to stop by. The walk-in fridge is well stocked with leafy greens. Oh, i got to check that out towards the end here. Someone remind me to quit at 12 so I can go check that out. Well, about an hour. Say about an hour. I don't know what time it is where you are. Alright. So my hazard protection is dropping still. It's getting really, really low. This takes a while to, to, to mine all this in the smallest setting. You can pick it up really quick. But I'd rather not. I want to get the full amount of materials from this copper deposit as I can possibly get. I'm going to take a moment, I'm going to recharge my hazard protection with one of my batteries, and I'm also going to recharge my terrain manipulator with some silicate powder. I didn't have enough to get it all the way, but that's okay. We're going to actually mine some silicate powder here when we're done, just so I can have a stock of it. I'm going to jump into the hole and hit the side wall that I couldn't see. And there we go. Pretty much all of it is gone. There may be some small amounts here that I can't see, like there. And that's fine. Um, but I'm going to go into flattening mode. And I'm going to pick up silicate dust. Now anything that's above ground, for the most part, gets destroyed when you do this. So do it sparingly. Another way you can do it too, is if you go back into the dig mode go into the largest setting and it will pick up a lot more silicate powder this way. It is one of the few elements you can pick up in large quantities with your biggest digger rather than the smallest. At least it used to be. Yeah, it's picking up smaller amounts. Okay, I just want to make sure. So I'm just going to dig this huge hole and pick up as much silicate powder as I can. I want to get about 300 of it or so, and we'll see how that goes. Always amaze me that you can destroy the terrain by mining, but stub your toe on a plant and the sentinels get ticked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those sentinels, those pesky little guys. No sense at all, but remember, they're not all sane. Most of the sentinels are kind of insane, so... Okay, we got about 300, I'll get up to the 400 mark, and then I'm going to quit. There we go, and let's recharge. Back up to 100. And if we look at our inventory, we should have quite a bit. We have quite a bit. We're in good shape. Look at all that copper we got now, right? That's pretty good. That's really, really good. All right, let's head back to the ship. Um, Sorry, dude. Yeah, the animals don't quite pay attention to the physics either. And 
The most common thing you're going to hear me say every time I play is, where's my ship? Where did I put it this time? Still haven't discovered the sixth animal on this planet, too. We're going to look for that. Hmm, I like that explorer class with the wide wings like that. I may have to look for that. Okay, so we're back to the ship. As we get closer, we're going to go ahead and put our refiner down. Notice we have a base computer now, but we need a refiner. Now, I'm not staying here. I am going to find someplace better to make my base. We have to recharge it as usual. I'm going to put in just a little bit of carbon. Now, with the copper... Okay, we got some on our ship. I'm going to add more from our inventory here. We got a really good amount at 594. I'm going to take out that amount. I'll keep 74 in my starship in case I need it later. We'll make 520 into chromatic metal. It takes a minute and a half. That should be enough of a charge to get there. Let's let that sit for a few moments. So, looks like we got a subterranean relic over here. I just want to check out the caves see what we can find. My life support is low. Oh no. Go back to my mining beam by hitting my G button. See? You do that with a sentinel round, they get upset. But they'll lose interest if you just wait. So while we're waiting, let's pick up some items. Maybe we'll get another microprocessor. That would be kind of nice. Ion battery that time. That's good. I honestly, I wasn't doing anything, officer. I was just standing here. <laughs> no, no, I don't know where he went. I think he went that way. It's like they lose sight of you at that point. Alright, so is this our cave entrance? It is. Alright, I'm going to go to the other side real quick, and I'm going to take a look around. I don't think we're going to get the creature, if you will near here, but we need a better spot. But I am going to find a spot on this planet to make a base. I mean, you can't see you if you don't move. Yeah, they're like, uh, they're like dinosaurs, I guess. But, well, that's also guessing. They can't see you if you don't move. They lose interest, I think, is what it is. It's like you're still not destroying things and looking for someone that's still destroying stuff. So, Do we have any food... That's hazard protection, right? I'll just use it up real quick to get it out of my inventory. Guess we're using a life support gel. 100% now. Alright. This should be done. It is done. Now you remember, I'm going to show you here real quick. It's got... Oh, it did use up all of the stuff that we had in there. Alright, well let me put it in again and keep going. I want to finish this up. Let's let it finish up. So you saw the stuff that's in the inventory. If I try to pick it up now, it won't let me. See? It, it will not let you pick it up while it's working. So you have to wait till it's completely done. There we go. It's turned green. We can now pick it up. And we get the carbon, the chromatic metal that we just made, and the portable refiner. If there was anything else in there, it would have picked it up too, but we don't have anything else. So that's good stuff. Uh, that's a great way to pick it up. It takes up a spot in your inventory. Keep that in mind. So you have one less inventory spot because of that. All right. Okay, I think we're done with this area. We It wants us to put down a base computer and claim a site. Let's look for a better spot. Don't just drop your base computer down because you can. So I'm going to do a scan. Uh, where are we here? Let's go south. Where are we on the planet? I always like to double check. About halfway. It doesn't make a difference. Let's do another scan from here. There's a building over there. What I'm looking for is either a tower, which will tell me where there's a minor trading post. Ooh, like this one. Good. Yes, 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 yes. Let's let's hit here. It's worth the lack... It's, it's worth burning some launch thruster fuel. So, this is a waypoint, but it will also tell you where there's either a minor settlement or a trading outpost. So do that. It does a pullback. It's not telling me yet what it is going to make it make me wait minor settlement excellent i always like to build near a minor settlement and i'll show you why in just a moment so that's always a great place to go it is my recommendation that you do so trading outposts are okay you get a lot of uh, air travel going in and they do have a nice terminal in there but minor settlements are much much better so we're going to go out into space 
and we're going to take a shortcut. You can fly there straight if you want, but it could take a while depending upon how far away it is. Hello. Get control back. Thank you. So if we do the pulse drive and lock in on it. There you go. It is pretty far away. It would have been at least a half hour or longer to get over there with uh, probably longer, probably hours. And we'll have a good view of the moon and that planet. That'd be nice. Okay. So we're going to come in for a landing at the minor, minor settlement. Minor settlements not only have a trading computer you can get stuff from in, in smaller quantities, but they've also got a, uh, in this case it's a GEC system, so it'll have a GEC trader inside as well to purchase items, special items, including upgrades. Minor upgrades, mind you, but they're still upgrades that can help you out. And a landing pad, even better. And there we go. Nice place to start our base, I think. It's hot here. Yes, it's not the best planet in the world. I don't see a cave anywhere, which I was hoping to find, but we passed over one over there. So we'll come back to it later. This has a lot of items at it, so by all means, pick up the stuff as you can. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna go in here and get that. And the nanites. So we have some extra nanites as well. Navigation data. Let's get into the damaged machinery and hope for... I'm going to get rid of the living slime. I don't care about that. And more nanites. And we got buried tech, which... Let me see if we can get it now. Nope. We can't. Can't get it. So we are going to have to use our terrain manipulator. Okay. Got two again that time. I like when we get four, but it doesn't always happen that way. Do, do, do. Okay, there's nothing in here as usual. All right, so let's go into the minor trading post. You do have some boxes sometimes around the outside you can get resources from. Oh, there's one right there too. Okay. All right. If there's plants, sometimes the plants will give you... Uh, carbon. Sometimes they give you three servings of it, but these apparently are one serving units. Okay, very good. Chairs will spin. If you look for anything on the table, like for instance, there's this little black disc thing. It's encrypted navigation data. Pick it up. It'll either give you nanites or give you another navigation data. Sometimes there's other things on the floor you can go for. Well, this is actually kind of decorated nice. It's a little different from some of the other places I've been to. All right. You do have another specimen over here. Sometimes you have things that have nanites in them. And even more cooler is the weapon terminal, which contains usually a multi-tool of choice. It's a C-class. It's not very powerful, but it is the rifle version of it. So this will be more powerful than the one you've got. It's got a lot more extra, extra slots opened up on it, plus the one supercharged. And we're getting... It looks like a personal force field out of it, too. So that's not bad. If we compare it, though... It's worth $2 million. We've got 10000 We ain't getting this anytime soon. But it's good to know it's there in case we want to get it later. You can upgrade your, your multi-tools too. But again, something for another time. Oh, there's our nanite computer. Let's get those. All right. Good deal. 50 nanites. So here's your main trade terminal. This is where you can get a lot of your stuff and sell things that you've acquired on the, on the way. When you sell, you can go into your exosuit inventory or your starship inventory and sell out of it. Um, there's really not anything I want to sell right now, I don't think. Uh, let me just take a look real quick. Yeah, nothing really. It's not really worth a lot. The salvage data, as you can see, is worth a lot, but I'm not going to sell it because I'm going to need it later on. If you have enough money, you can buy stuff as well. This is just fluff local trade goods that you can trade to other systems. Um, you can get Starship launch fuel, very expensive, just make it for now. Microprocessors, expensive, make them for now. You won't be using the unstable plasma, but you can get enough, like uh, it has small amounts of ferrite dust and cobalt if you need them. Aronium could come in handy later on, but we'll worry about that later. Pyrite is used as a fuel and other recipes as well, but it can be very handy. Silver, ammonia, there we go. That's what this one happens to have. Sometimes you get lucky and they'll have exosuit charts that you can get for upgrading your exosuit. Here's your merchant. Your merchant carries two 
levels of purchases. You won't understand a thing he's saying right now. You need to purchase components or purchase blueprints. Let's look at the components first. Components include Hermetic Seal. They all vary from trader to trader. Keep that in mind. Uh, just a piece of advice. Keep one junky multi-tool and one junky ship so you can swap them in later in the game. Yes, and not break your good stuff. Very, very good idea. Keep one of your ships. Keep a ship that you don't use very often and just keep it in your inventory in case you need it later on. You can carry... How many ships, guys? Is it now? 12? 10? I don't remember. I think it's 12. Sentinel Quad Companion Drop Claimed. Excellent. So we got our two-hour drop. Uh, you can swap between them later in the game. 12 ships. Thank you, Demager. Thank you. I'm going to try to finish this off. Mm, yum. Cold coffee. <clears throat> Yuck. Okay. Back to water. But you can get a lot of items here. So the antimatter housing, the microprocessors, the wiring looms. These are all very necessary items to have in the game later on for upgrades and other things that you're going to need to build. So keep them in handy. Amino chambers, I've never really used them too much, but they are used in certain recipes. Solar mirror as well. Finally, you got a magnetic resonator. Very handy in recipes. Quantum computers, the same thing. Very expensive, though. Or kind of expensive. Glass you can make. Don't bother buying it, folks, unless you really have the money and credits to spare on it. Same thing in the dihydrogen jellies. We can get one right now, and I can turn it into two dihydrogen if I wish. Um, you can get more salvage data and the hydraulic wiring for, for stuff. Not really a whole lot of stuff here I can use, but it's still handy to have these things here in case I'm like, I don't feel like making it right now. I don't have the carbon on me or the oxygen to make a hermetic seal. Let me go ahead and grab one real quick. Or metal plates is usually in here too, but he doesn't have them here. They're in the main ter terminal. Blah, 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 blah. I'm talking too fast. You Thunder, take care, my friend. Gotta go. Have a wonderful week. Thanks for the stream, Paul. Hey, no problem, dude. Thank you, 07. You have a great week as well. And thank you for being here. Wiring looms especially useful if you forget to change ships like I did in my recent run. Face pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need those. You need those for repairs. If you forget to repair your ship, or you forget to switch your ship before the end of the uh, main storyline, you'll have a lot of damage. And you're going to need a lot of wiring looms. A lot of them. Probably in the upwards of the 60 to 80 range, I think. So there's a lot of them you need. In early game, you don't have the recipe for the part, so pick it up. Yeah, if you don't have recipes for a lot of these, like the quantum computers, the magnetic resonators, it's good to get them when you need them. Don't just grab them because you can grab them. Keep that in mind. All right. What else can you get from this guy? Upgrades. So, blueprints. You can get a teleport receiver. You're going to get it anyway. You can get advanced miner la mining laser right now if you wish. But you see what it requires to build it. Two wiring looms, hermetic seal, carbon nanotubes. You can only make two of those. And it's not worth getting right now. You will get it as a reward later on. Neural Stimulator, you can get that for Exosu Movement Upgrades. It gives you a little bit of a boost. Um, you can get that if you want. Same thing with the Waveform Recycler. It gives you a little bit more scan radius and allows your scanner to recharge a little quicker if you wish. And more shield protection if you want it. Uh, has a protection battery. It just gives you a little bit of a 20% increase in how long it takes for you to drain out. Uh, barrel Ionizer for your Bolt Caster. You can have Hazard Protection for Hot Planets here but requires phosphorus, so I'd have to harvest that. Silver, which I don't have a lot of and I can only find in a cave, and copper, which we can get pretty easily. So it's not a bad idea, but it only just gives us a plus 21% heat resistance. So unless you get one that's an actual true upgrade, it's really not worth it, in my personal opinion. This weird thing going on that says that shows everything being scanned is one of the sentinels outside scanning the building. They don't like the building very much. It is what it is. So that's, all nut, uh, in a nutshell, what this place is. It's very handy to have this, again, for the landing pad, at the very least. Landing pad usually has items on it you can grab, too. I don't see any here, though, right now. So no big deal. So I'm going to build my base here. Nice flat plateau here. It wants me to drop a base computer down. I like to drop it near the door entrance here. But because of those two modules there, I can't expand out. So I'm going to build it right next to the landing pad. and Hopefully that helps a little bit. So base computer, I'm going to turn it just a little bit because it turns on its own and will face this way, I hope. Hey, got it right for once. You go into it, search cartographic, cartographic archives. Universal Archive Search reveals no prior claims on this site. Sonar test confirms site is suitable for construction. Claim site. Claim. 
does a pullback again so you get to get the bird's eye view of your whole area looks like we have something out there to the right i think that's just a deposit probably like magnetized ferrite or something like that archives available so base computer online search base computer archives use the terminal with e so let's do what it tells us to do accessing log from previous user entry 4925d follows now weird that it tells you previous user it's referring to you in another life, if you will, another iteration. So, let's continue. Storm sweeping across, pss, but construction supplies low. Depositing shelter plans while pss, need to pss, back soon. No idea what they're trying to really tell us, but otherwise there's a storm coming in. We extract the plans, and what we're getting is we're getting our first set of plans to build wood, uh, a wood shelter. Okay, seven items. And it tells us that that's our next thing. We need to build a base. Okay, so let's get out of this, and what do we need to build it? So let's go into this. We need to floor. We need floor panels. It requires ten carbon, so you need a good amount of carbon to build this entire base up. As you start to build it, your sto another storm is going to come in. So my suggestion is you try to grab some carbon now, while you can. There they are. And you know we got a sentinel nearby. He's not going to like this. I don't like you either, policeman. I'll go over this way. Fine. Try to stay out of view of him. Okay, that worked. <laughs> Just gonna get a little extra carbon. We got plenty of ferrite dust. We'll need that later. Alright. That should be enough to build what we need. Let's get back over here. And drop down a base. Alright. Not going to make it perfect. I like to make it just a four square base to start with. We need four. We need some timber walls to go around it. They require 25 carbon each. And it says I can build 15. There's a storm I told you about. Gonna do that. I'm going to leave that open. We're going to put a door on either side. So there's the angled door. Requires 10 pure ferrite. So let's put down our portable refiner. We're going to get hit by a storm here in a second. Go in there. We're going to put some of this in, about half of it. Where's our ferrite? There it is. We don't need a lot, but I'm going to let it go because we're going to need more later on. So let's get about 50 for now. I'll leave the rest in there for a moment. And we need to build a door. You don't have to, but it's a good idea to have one. And we need to build roofing. I like this roofing here. They, they both cost the same, but I just happen to like it better. Now, if you hit the B button in build mode, you'll pull out into a third person view, or really, what was it? Fourth person? I don't know what you want to call it. And I'm going to build my four roofing parts, and then get out of my build. I am now protected from the storm. So we're done. Now, if you want to, something you can do, if you go up to your computer and you go into the Z, again the build menu, you can select something by hitting the C button. And you can pick it up and go inside and put it down inside. So now you're protected from the storm. I have no idea which way the computer is going to face. Oh, that worked. There we go. Uh, and I've missed out on some of the chat. And really, if you don't know the recipe, yep, we got that. You can talk to the Gek walking about, too, and maybe get some resources. That's true. We're going to check that in a moment. If you were in a Viking system, they will sometimes give you a free multi-tool for talking to them. That is true. Very true. Um, out-of-body experience, that B button. Yeah, that's basically what it is. It's an out-of-body and pulls you up, and your character stays put. And then you can move around within a certain radius and build stuff. Do you think your previous iteration was aware he was leaving notes for you? Probably not, and just didn't blab that we're all iterations that prevent you from desperately needing therapy when you have so much work to do. <laughs> Indeed. Um, you'll learn that as you go. I don't want to really drop that bomb yet. Uh, I think everybody needs to learn it if they've never played No Man's Sky. But yeah, your previous iteration did not know what was happening when they got reset, and they died. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, when they reset, and then you respawned as a new iteration. Your storyline... Your storyline will fix that and teach you what actually happened 
and you are going to be part of it, I think is really what it turns out to be. Oh boy, more fun, more fun in the chat. Sorry, in my text messages, I'm getting more fun. Ah, uh, boy. Sorry, Matt. I don't know if you're watching. That is Sugar Rat. I hope you're, if you're watching right now. If you're not, I'm sorry. Uh, that's bad news. I hope things work out for you. It's nothing, nothing really, really bad, but annoying is what it is. So, anyway, sorry about that cryptic response. Um, that makes sense. Or a sheet, or they. Apologies for being my me centric. True, true. So I'm going to say I. My character doesn't know one way or the other. He, she, them, they, it, etc. Whatever you like to say. Um, I was taught that the Artemis storyline, as this is called, if you think who Artemis was in legend uh, uh, or uh, fiction, if you will, it female. And I keep forgetting that, that Artemis is female. Um, and I have at least one person in here who feels that Nada and Polo, Nada on the anomaly, is also female. So didn't think about that. Uh, so I'm trying to correct my thinking on that and remember it, but I always forget. It's just me. Uh, take no offense, please. And the twin of Apollo. Yes, yes, that's true. That's true if you're really into the Greek mythology. Okay, so accessing log for previous unit, additional archives recovered. Okay, let's go through that. Entry 4925E follows. Construction largely a success. Recovered salvage data, which we've been doing, from nearby... Obviously, buried technology is what they mean to say there. Plans logged. Scans indicate additional subterranean devices beginning search. So we extract plans. Whoever recorded these logs evidently had some success. I have access to their plans, and perhaps I can learn from their efforts. Okay, so we get our construction research unit. It's a limited research unit that gives you certain plans. You don't get all of them that you would get from, say, the anomaly. So magnetized ferrite, it's required, 20 of that, and then one carbon nanotube. So, and we need to get, obviously, according to that box that popped up, we need to get more buried tech. First thing we can do, though, is construct the research unit. So we need magnetized ferrite. Remember that pure ferrite I just made? Let's make some more. Now, magnetized ferrite, pardon me, pure ferrite, when you put it over here, is a two-to-one ratio to magnetized ferrite. So it takes two pure ferrite to make one magnetized, even though ferrite to pure is one-to-one. It's always been a thing with No Man's Sky. I'm going to make a whole bunch of pure ferrite because I need it. And the other thing I'm going to do is when I'm done making my magnetized and we build this construction unit, I'm going to dump all that, that uh, rusty metal in here and get some more ferrite out of it because I could use it later on. So kind of like plan ahead as you're doing stuff. And... It sometimes stops there, and I apologize for that. I don't know why it does that. Digital Drifter, thank you very much for following. 07 to you, sir, or ma'am. Thank you very much for being here, too. Appreciate you being here. All right, so we're going to go in here. We're going to find my pure ferrite. Did I pass it? I must have passed it. There it is, 360. Let's make half of it into magnetized ferrite. Get that going. Thanks for having me. Well, well, everybody's everybody's welcome, and you can backseat drive or answer or ask any questions you wish about No Man's Sky. We'll try to help as best we can. It's not just myself. I've got about three thousand hours in it. I know that some of the the people that are watching right now have even more hours than I have in the game, um, and we are allowing a lot of backseat driving and uh, teaching people how to play No Man's Sky with their help as well. So, open forum. Just keep it clean. That's all we ask. While I'm here, let's grab the 461 rusted metal. Give me 922, but I'm going to have to recharge this. Let's get that going. All right, so we're going to lay down the um, construction unit. We need a carbon nanotube as well, so let me make that. Okay, good. And construction unit built. Put you right here. There we go. Always going to get these firestorms coming through, so that's fine. All right, so when we go into this, we can buy things with our salvage data. How much salvage data we got? We got four right now. One thing I'm going to do, too, to clean up inventory, I want to put some of the stuff in my starship. I don't need to hang on to some of these things. Uh, chromatic metal I'm going to put in there, too. I just want to get rid of that. All right, so ferrite dust. Let me move some stuff around. 
Alright, so you got ferrite, pure ferrite, magnetized ferrite. I got them all lined up, it's the way I like to do it. I always keep my cobalt, my ionized cobalt here, I don't have that, so I'll put my dihydrogen in there. Carbon, condensed carbon, I like to have everything in its order. Um, let's move that and that. Now we got sodium and sodium nitrate. I'm going to put you guys down here, we're going to be spending you in a minute. And keep the oxygen wherever you like, I like to just put it down here. I'm going to keep my, my silicate powder out to one side. All right, construction unit. What do we need? Let's see what it says. Analysis unit online, diagnostic suggestion, users should recover salvage data from buried technology. Equip and utilize an analysis visor. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So research buildable technology, let's give that a shot. First thing we can get is a, is a teleporter. It requires two salvage data. We're gonna go ahead and grab that. And as you can see, it's made from items that we have access to. We'll get that. <clears throat> okay, not going to build it yet. We do need a biofuel reactor to power our base. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It only costs one, so let's grab that. And the last thing we need is we need a wire. It doesn't cost us anything. It's free. We have one more salvage data we can use. We can use it on one of these, but I'm going to hold off on that. We're going to get some stuff on that later. The other thing we can do, if you go to the top, you can scan around using the A or D buttons on your keyboard to things like this. <clears throat> I can get glass frames, I can get ramps, I can get other panels, things like that. I'm going to hold off on this for now. We don't really need it. Finally, you can get stone structures, alloy structures, back to our habitation tech. All this stuff is also available in the, in the, uh, the anomaly. We'll get to that later. Alright, good deal. So we got what we need. <clears throat> nice. I just started playing in May and I have over 600 hours already. Good golly, Miss Molly. That is a lot of hours in your first few months. Just can't put it down, can you? I love it. I love it. You went all in. Absolutely, absolutely. Howdy. And this game can definitely keep the hours skipping by. It sure can. It's burning through right now, and I have to keep an eye on it right now. I just love this game. I do, too. I do, too. Uh, 100%. I've been playing it for five years. I started playing in 2019 watching Jason and Zane and uh, uh, Beeble Bum play this, as well as uh, no Man Mandy from No Mandy Sky. Uh, survival Bob um, and watching them taught me how to play it and I started playing as well and then a couple years later I was like you know I'm not seeing really a whole lot of here's how you play No Man's Sky so I made a whole bunch of videos on YouTube for that um, and started doing it myself and let me tell you it was nerve-wracking at first but I really enjoy the streaming I enjoy talking to people and trying to explain things to people so it's been a lot of fun wish I could I would have discovered it sooner um, when I discovered in 2019, at the time, I said to myself, I wish I discovered it sooner, and then found out that as of 2019, they really fixed a lot of the stuff that was broken for three years. So <laughs> I kind of am happy I discovered it when I did. My thing is, is that discovering streaming. It wasn't discovering. I mean, I knew a lot of people streamed. I'd never done it before until two years ago and then discovered, hey, I, maybe I have a knack for this. Let me give it a shot. And I really wish now... 10 years ago I had started started doing this I would have had a blast I don't know if I would have had a time but it would have had a blast and then we had Marani jump in, in the last two years and she started bugging me with questions leading to more working with us and me myself as well uh, yes long time uh, uh, long time follower right there Marani absolutely MJ as you as well uh, April to uh, several of you Cy spam you you've more recent but still great it's great having you all here I appreciate you folks a lot because I enjoy doing it. I'm not interested in getting the followers. I'm not interested in getting as many people as I can to watch. I'm just sharing the joy with the game with everybody. That's what I do. So, will it change one day? Will it turn into a business? I hope so. It would be kind of nice. It'll probably be over on YouTube for the most part, but it would be kind of nice. Uh, someone asked me the other day, uh, and nice to meet you too, Digital Drifter. Thank you for being here too. Um, someone asked me the other day whether I preferred, and it was on Friday, I preferred streaming on Twitch or on YouTube, which I found easier or more enjoyable. I'm glad it's taken a few days of doing this. Um, I do have to admit that streaming on Twitch is a lot easier. It's a lot easier. I have to think about very little anymore 
in regards to the streaming. I just start the stream on my OBS and it's there, it's going, it's running, and it tracks everything. I don't have to have multiple windows open. YouTube, I've got to get a lot more set up to get the stream going. But YouTube is more of a platform for everything, not just streaming. It's more of a platform for everybody's videos and stuff like that, where Twitch is focused and, and designed strictly for streaming. So that's where the benefit comes in. I like them both for multiple reasons. So I do like both streaming on Twitch and streaming on YouTube. I'll go back to YouTube because it sounds like I've got most of my viewer base is over there. Um, we've got, uh, last I checked, we're, we're climbing up to the 1200 uh, subscriber mark over there. So it's kind of nice uh, to have all those people uh, watching out and everything like that. Over here, we've climbed over 50 and we've only done it in a couple days, <laughs> which is neat. Uh, through like, what's five, six streams I think I've done on Twitch now and I've got over 50 people following now, which is really cool, which just is another testament to the community of No Man's Sky. Um, great community, absolutely wonderful community, very friendly people and you don't usually have too many trolls. So it's kind of nice. So let's keep going, folks. Uh, I sound like a pain in the neck to create. I love it, though. See, I'm also a uh, uh, an artist in the background. I've done a lot of drawing all my, all my life and paintings and stuff like that. I like to do that. So moving over to digital art and using any kind of medium for that, whether it be Photoshop or something else, um, I enjoy doing. So I take nice screenshots and I'll superimpose stuff on screenshots. Sometimes I'll make them funny. Sometimes I make them very uh, sharp and you know attention getters i just do it how I, however i see fit so uh is it is it hard to get traffic to switch platforms probably but you know the funny part is digital drifter i have a lot of folks in here right now that follow me over there on a regular basis so anytime i do a live stream um i usually end up with anywhere between 10 and about 30 10 to 30 people watching at any given time. Now, there are other streamers out there about the same amount of time. They'll get upwards 40, 50, 60, sometimes more. I, I am no Jason Plays. Uh, I don't usually have thousands of people watching me. Um, but having a good group of people that is a solid fan base really works out nicely. Um, I like watching Jason. I have no problem watching him. He's a little too excitable to me. Um, just in my thing. But if the guy lived next door to me, I'm pretty sure we'd be good friends. I guarantee it. Most of all the streamers, if I was if we lived really close to each other, we'd be good friends. Beeble Bum, I have no doubt in my mind I'd get along with that guy. We'd be doing some gardening or something like that. It's just one of those things, but unfortunately, we're in different places on the planet. Um, Jason lives out in Colorado. Uh, Delta One is over in Washington. Beeble Bum's on the, on the island of Malta in the middle of the Mediterranean, just south of Sicily. Uh, survival Bob's down in uh, Georgia area. You got people all over the planet that are doing this and we're having a great time. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm a plumber by trade, but art is still my passion as well. I love art, but I like anything. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in everything. I don't know what it is. I like going out into nature and going hiking. I like camping. I like uh, doing my own repairs around the house. I like woodworking. I like plumbing. I like electrical work. I just keep getting into everything, everything. I love gaming. I've been doing that all my life. It's just, I'm an inch, I have an interest in everything. iPad, for Create plus Apple Pen 2. Game changer for my digital art. Oh, absolutely. I've heard that about the Apple uh, series of stuff. Uh, not something I've really gotten into on the Apple side of things. Um, Twitch recently relaxed their rules to allow you to simulcast to other platforms so you can stream live both Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Yeah. One thing about that, which is great, that is really happy. I'm really happy to do that. Um, OBS will allow me to do that if I start buying into it. And that's the thing. I'm not exactly a rich fellow over here, and I can't really... I can't justify yet spending extra money on something like that when you have a family to raise. So it is what it is. Uh, I did notice that when I tried to take the recorded video that I did on Twitch the other day and put it on YouTube, YouTube did not like that at all, period. Hated it. It sat in processing for 24 hours and never processed and never went on YouTube. So the only thing I can think of doing is taking it, throwing it over on the uh like on CapCut or something like that reprocess it and then put it on youtube see if that works <laughs> well mail sass if you say so <laughs> we are cheap viewers we are cheap viewers as the case may be when you have thousands of viewers we still get to say we were the og fans absolutely well you know if we ever get there it is what it is and if we don't we're still having fun 
but heck yeah, heck yeah. We'll see what we can do. I lived in South Carolina for about 18 months near Myrtle Beach. Nice place. Yeah, that is a beautiful place. That is a beautiful place. Been all up and down the eastern seaboard of the U.S., so I've been pretty much everywhere. I lived in Florida for quite a long time, so I like it pretty darn, pretty good down here. <laughs> well, good for you. South Carolina is a nice place. I do like South Carolina, North Carolina, especially towards the mountains. I do like the beach. Don't get me wrong. I love the beach. I've got wonderful times at the beach. I grew up near the beach as a teenager, which was a lot of fun, um, but the mountains have always been my calling. I always like to go camping out there and, uh, you know, hiking in the mountains and stuff. So it is what it is. I have gotten a little sidetracked here. Let's get back to it. Um, what are we going? We can rename our, comp so it's telling us to rename our base. So you click up there where it has the pencil and you type anything you want here. Um, I'm going to do the Elon Paul base one and just call it something very simple and very cheesy because it's not a base I want to keep. This is not a paradise planet and it's, ugh, you know, it is what it is. And there's a nice picture of my base, which happens to be a four square hut. It is what it is. I can upload the base I want so that people can see it if they wish. I'll we'll go ahead and do that. Base is now uploaded. Excellent. And when, when it updates, it updates and pardon me, if people come out to this planet, they'll be able to see it. Uh, so now it's telling me to, oh, we gotta, we gotta build a teleporter. We need four metal plates. Let's go ahead and get that going here. Go ahead and jump over here. All right, we need three more metal plates. We have plenty of ferrite, so I'm gonna go ahead and make the four. If you keep hit, if you hover over something and hit the E button, you'll craft more. Other um, platforms will allow you to select an item. Like if you go into here and select something to build, you can then select how many Oh, it says it here too. So for instance, if I want to make two of these, I can I can do more usually, like here. See? Left and right buttons will allow me to build more at one time if I wish. So I'm not going to do that just yet. So it's not telling me I need more carbon to build my two carbon nanotubes. All right, let's go out and go find carbon. Atticus, good day all. Just started a new game last night. I've forgotten how fun it is to actually work for my survival. <laughs> Well, that's what we've been doing in this new save over here, my friend. Oh, I just attracted his attention. Let's really piss him off. They don't know where it's happening. <laughs> He's upset. He doesn't know where to find the person that's doing it. That is hilarious. Over here. Over here. No, no. Over here. Let's go over here now. Pissing off Sentinels 24-7. Oh, crap. I accidentally hit him. That could have started a battle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love I love ticking off sentinels. Anyway, we should have plenty of carbon now. Yeah, you see all that uh, all those blocks? Yeah, we blocked all the links. Uh, thank you for trying, folks. Uh, really appreciate you giving it a shot to try to get people to go to other channels. But uh, nice try. It's all been blocked. Thank you anyway. All right, so we need to make some carbon nanotubes. One, two. Okay, I got two of them. So now I can build my base teleport module. I'm gonna put it over there in the corner. There we go. And there we go. We now have a teleporter, but insufficient power. Why? We've got to build it now. Yeah, well, Demager, you told me about that and I jumped into the settings yesterday and started changing some things, so. Uh, I blocked all that, so no problem, no problem, glad to do it. Um, those folks most likely work for another streamer, um, and that streamer is trying to drum up, you know, more people to follow. More people to follow means more money for them. I get it. I get it. It's kind of a jerk move, but I do get it, and if you're being, if you're being paid by them to do that, so be it. You know, that's up to you. It depends on if that's the kind of person you want to be. More power to you. Uh, I think deep down everybody's good. Everybody's good people. But um, sometimes you can do wrong things. It comes back around in the end. That's all I can say. All right, let's move on. Let's see what we got going on here. So I need to build something. It says to build that, but I got to power the base, right? It says in the mission log. All right, so let's go into the mission log. Mission log is in your escape menu, powering the base. See, right now, it doesn't have anything else. It says awakenings, and this is what we're following, but we have to go to our secondary mission and select it in order for it to tell us what to do next. 
So, now it's telling us to construct a biofuel re reactor, which we got. So I'm going to go ahead and get it. It requires a metal plate and oxygen. We got oxygen, but we need more metal plates. So let's build another one. We have the ferrite. Glad we got all that ferrite, right? So let's build our biofuel reactor, and we're going to put it right here. We only need one for now. We might need more later. And we need an electrical wire now to run from there. Now the green icons are where you connect your electrical wires to. The teleport module only has the one spot. Biofuel reactor has one, two two spots to connect to. So this is like an in and out, if you will. You can put another reactor next to it and daisy chain them. That's what it, that allows for. So we're going to connect to that and connect to that. Okay, the wire is red because there's no power running through it. So now it tells us that we have to charge it. So we're going to go back in here and we chose a fuel furnace tank and we can use either carbon, condensed carbon or oxygen to fuel this. I'm just going to use half oxygen right now and that will give us 25 hours of charge if I decided I wanted to play that long. Right now it's also telling the grid power so it needs uh, 20,000 units in order to be able to power that teleport module but we have 50 available. That's what this is putting out power output of 50. So as we add more stuff we'll need more power. Now another thing too is we can add batteries in to store power in case we're using say a solar panel that only charges during the day. Keep that in mind but we'll worry about that later. All right. Some of them are also fishing malware. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I am so sorry. Thank you, Demager. Good, good, good point. Uh, karma. Yeah, it is. Karma really can come back to bite you, if you will. Uh, some of them are also that. Never click on an unsolicited link, folks. Absolutely, you are correct. Easy. Yes, that's true. Very good point. Safe computing is happy computing. Laugh out loud across the board. Very good, guys. Very good, guys. I love you guys. You guys are fantastic. Looks like my refiner's done. We'll get almost a thousand ferrite dust out of it. Almost burned up the charge. A little bit of a glitch in the refiners, and I don't know if it's ever been fixed. If you leave something in there, char you know, doing some stuff, and you leave the system and come back, there's a good chance it'll be empty and you'll lose the, the goods that were in there. I don't know if that's been fixed. It's always been a glitch or a bug in the system. So we'll see. All I have for sale is chicken eggs, but unfortunately I have no links for them. <laughs> well, do you have the app? Anyway, it's not important. Um, base computer log updated. Let's go back to the base computer one more time. Accessing log from previous user. Gotta talk again. Additional archives recovered. Entry 4925F follows. You notice it going in alphabetical order here. Scanner detected unusual broadcast, bzz, repeating 16 bzz, from the space station. Warning! End of archive. Records interrupted. The base computer archives have reached their end. It seems there is nothing more I will learn from them. My predecessor appears to have left their base and headed to the space station. So guess where we're going? Space station time. Bad dad joke. <laughs> Defeat the evil trolls with media knowledge. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Indeed. All right, so we're done here. Um, we got our base pretty much going to start with. Up we go. All right, so we're going to leave this lovely little uh, planet that we're on right here. We're going to head up to the space station. Congratulations. So we're going to get out of here finally. Off we go. We do need more salvage data. We'll have to dig some more up. But you now have a basis for how this game gets played. Um... To get to the space station, you do obviously want to go into space first, but let's get up into space and we can show you. And it's the same process. The space station in this case is actually on the other side of the planet from where we're located. So, but if you still aim for it in the in the rectangle here, rectangle, is that the right word? It will track it around the curve of the planet, and then you'll head there. The bottom right corner is what your pulse drives engine fuel capacity currently has. As you see, we're dropping into the bottom, so... Ooh, this is a nice space station. we got an asteroid field nearby. We're going to be utilizing that soon. Actually, let's utilize it now. show you this real quick. You can switch back and forth on your weapons from on, with your G button. We have rocket launcher, we have photon cannon back and forth. Your photon cannon will overheat over time. Why do you want to go into an asteroid field and shoot these things? Because you get items from it. We get gold. We'll get silver. And these ob oblong-shaped ones are platinum. 
I don't know if the red ones are going to turn out to be the tritium. They are. Now, I've never had it be so defining in what each one was. Bigger rocks take longer to, to break through and you can overcharge your cannons. But we need a lot more tritium. You're going to need more of that. You can get gold, silver, and platinum on a great basis from up here. Occasionally you get oddball items like anomaly detectors and stuff like that. We will, you can touch base on that at another time. Look them up on the No Man's Sky uh, uh, Reddit. And you'll see a bunch of information about what those do and what they can do. But for an early gaming, don't worry about it. Okay. Again, I want a lot of tritium. I need a lot. There we go. And if you are starting to overheat, switch to rockets. It usually takes them out in one shot. But you can't continually repeat that because it will just burn them up. They overheat immediately after one shot and it takes a little bit for them to recharge. Reticle. Reticle. Another new thing for me. First time I ever saw red asteroids. Oh boy. I know. I think they're actually finally getting the colors down. Like the red ones seem to be giving tritium every single time. Nope. That one gave me silver. So I guess it doesn't make a difference. I lied. Again. See, that one gave tritium. That gave me gold. I'm just curious. Tritium hypercluster. Okay, those are good. You'll get two other items from this. You'll get gold nuggets and tritium hypercluster's from here. These are your tritium hyperclusters. If you open one up and analyze it, it will turn into more tritium for you. Try to keep an extra couple floating around. You need them for recipes later on. Gold, there's no reason to hang on to a gold nugget. Open them up. Get more gold out of it. You could use it. And the gold seems to be worth more, I think. I don't know. All right, we're going to head to the space station now. I think I got enough resources for the time being. Okay. Try to aim... But if you can get into that glowy path, it will suck you in. Watch. See? And it pulls you in at a very high rate. It'll even straighten you out if you went in upside down like I did. Yes, don't hit the asteroid miner. Sometimes when you're farming asteroids, another ship will show up and start mining them. And occasionally they'll drop goods into your ship at the same time. If you hit that ship by accident, sentinels pop up and start attacking you. So be careful of that. All right, congratulations, we're in the space station. This is your first stop before you start getting your hyperspace unit and uh, your hyperdrive and being able to leave the system. This contains a great many things. Starting on the left, there's nothing on this wall, so don't worry about it. This is a mission agent, which you can get missions from to get certain items. If we talk to him, he's just going to talk right now. But this is for later on. We can ask about other travelers. Life form waits behind their terminal. They look me up and down and, and seem to decide I'm not a customer. They do not look particularly helpful. We ask about other travelers. Life form looks at me with alarm before waving me away. Okay, so that's what they're going to do. But he'll give out missions so you can get stuff. Um, there's your teleporter. You can get back to your own base this way or go to other bases if you find them. Uh, this is a trade terminal, obviously. And if you go in there, there's a lot to be purchased. Again, same kind of items, but usually in larger quantities. Looking at these quantities, I'm going to say this is either a one- or two-star economy. But you get other things here, too. As you can see, pugnium as well. Uranium, which is very handy. That's a good for an alternative fuel device for your ship. Keep that in mind. Phosphorus. And it looks like we've got chlorine as well. And you can sell items there, too, obviously. Um, let's go down the side of this real quick and show you all the other areas. Next section, this is going to be your navigation person, cartographer. He's going to give out charts and stuff like that that you can purchase from him using your navigation data that you've been accumulating. Let's go up the stairs. I could fly up, but we'll take the stairs. Okay, over here on the right is a merchant. The merchant will vary from place to place. Sometimes it'll be the banking merchant or... Uh, which consists of an envoy and you can see he's gonna he's gonna get mad at me if I choose him he'll usually wave me away because I don't have any ranking with this company see he's waving high he's being nice but trust me it's not worth it you can get rankings with these different merchants as well uh, also early game remember to check plants for free carbon yes that is correct I can tell Tell the economy by the number of kinds of trade goods at the trade terminal too another thing you can do is if you look at the station itself. On the left hand side it tells you the le dominant life form, conflict level, which thank heavens is low, but manufacturing says 
fledgling. That's a one star economy. So that means it's not doing very well here. So we're in a low economy system. So we definitely want to create a new base. It's probably somewhere else in a different system. The plants do have, you can sit on these chairs if you want. The plants do have carbon in them. So you can check all these plants for carbon at some point or another. You can get the sitting thing to go away. Yep, can't seem to get one from that one. How about this one? Nope, can't get it from there either. So it's only certain plants on the station here that you can get that from. Okay, this next person here is our technology merchant. This is for Exocraft. You don't need that right now. This is for your ship. This is for upgrades, like uh, weapons upgrades, shield upgrades, things like that. Again, you'll worry about that later. Nope, another plant. I'll go ahead and grab that too. The next item, uh, this whole kiosk over here is dealing with multi-tools. There's two multi-tools that you can check out here. This one looks like an alien multi-tool. Very nice, A-class. Uh, one supercharged slot on it, and it looks like it has a mining beam with an, uh, with an upgrade for it. Let's see how much this thing costs. Not bad, only 2.4 million for an A-class. That's beyond crazy. And look at the coloring on it. That's kind of crazy looking. I think I may be coming back for this one. Thing is, is, if we reload, there's a chance that the tool will change, which would kind of suck. And I don't have the money to buy it. The one on the other side is sometimes the same and sometimes different. It will usually be a different class. Same class. A little bit of different arrangement of the slots that are available to you. This is probably also going to be about 2.4. It is. Okay, great. But it, And it also has the mining beam. That's actually a nice tool. I hope it's still here on the next load when I get, get money. So here is your, your technology merchant, which you can talk to him and get upgrades for your multi-tool. This is a multi-tool upgrade station. So you can go in here and you can upgrade your multi-tool. See? You can install a slot, purchase a new slot, or upgrade the class with nanites. That's what you need nanites for, for the most part. Can't do any of those because we don't have enough of anything. Nice picture of a dude here. Very nice, very nice. This is your exosuit upgrade shop. So you can upgrade with this guy and get upgrades for it. You can also hit the exosuit upgrade. If you're, if you're low on slots, this is the place to get it. The first one that you get is free. Put it anywhere you like. I would love to put it in here right now, but my technology area is really, 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 really light right now. I'm going to put it over here because I think that's going to be a supercharged slot. Oh, that doesn't give it to you for free anymore. Nope, it's going to cost us... It'll give it free for the for, for down here, and it's going to cost us a thousand for up here. I'm going to go ahead and get it for down here then, for now. There we go. You can only use it one time per station. So keep that in mind. Bone's about to die. We'll talk to you all later. Thanks for putting up with me. TT, yeah, talk to you later. Absolutely, Digital Drifter, good to have you here. Thank you for joining. Check me out on YouTube. The link's down below. We, we'll be uh, streaming again Wednesday night over on YouTube. So... There's usually two new nav datas each at the station. Hmm, I forgot about that. All right. So as we wander around, there's no other vendors to go to. You got plants you can check out. But look for things like this. Navigation data, there's one. Um, look for things that are broken. Usually I have red lights on it. In this case, we got some credits out of it. Not much. 13 credits is nothing. Go to the upper areas. There's some more plants that you can get stuff from. Again, look for a red. We got some more units out of it. We're not getting much in the way of units. But you look for anything that has a red icon indicating that something's wrong. Nothing else over here. We'll grab the plant. So we got a, lot, a little bit of carbon from the station. At least that's something. <clears throat> Losing my voice. You can talk to each one of these characters as you go through. We'll, we'll do that in just a moment. But check all these things. Here's a data silo. Got some more, more stuff. It's secure. More units. And over here, there's sometimes other stuff. I, I missed one other area that you can go to. It's nothing to do over here. You can go over there if you want, but it doesn't really help you any. It's nothing to do here. But down the stairs and behind it, over here, 
Let me go all the way over here. You have a different vendor behind the stairs kind of hidden away. This is your black market guy. He's a scrap dealer. You have to have certain items to be able to trade with him. Um, the only warning is, is be careful what you trade. So, so the life form waits behind the terminal to look me up and down and decide, same, same thing that we had before. We ask about other travelers, looks at me with alarm before waving me away. He only trades in mysterious things and stuff, so that's why he's behind the stairs and tucked away. Over here, you have your exosuit appearance modifier. It's free. You don't like the way you look? Take a look. So you can change your race. You can go to a traveler. Right now I'm an anomaly. I'm going to stick with anomaly. I always like the anomalies better. Five different body shapes. We only have access to 11 of the heads. Um, I kind of like that one the best. Kind of reminds me of a uh, stormtrooper. Anyway, torso. And you can get colors too. You can change your colors and stuff like that too. So now that we're at the at this point, I'm going to go ahead and change my colors over to my favorites personally. I'm going to put some profile accents on it, and I like. Let's see, how does this look real quick? Let me just go all purple real fast. Not good. Black. Eh. Black over here. Purple over there. That's pretty cool. Little white trim. Oh, that's the white visor. Okay, let's go with this. I do like the yellow. You throw some yellow in there and it makes it look kind of interesting. So I'll stick with white over here, but we'll check it out on the torso. Torso, I'm going to go with the sleek spacesuit. I always like that best. Uh, we'll throw some highlights in. Uh, so just like before, we're going to go black, purple, and see what the yellow looks like. Got some little yellow striping. Almost looks like uh, this. So that looks all right. Let's move on to the armor. Sleek, stripe, black, purple, yellow. I'll go with a brighter yellow here. Gloves, sleek, black, purple, brighter yellow on there. Three fingers and a thumb, interesting. Sleek, black, purple. I like to go with the same patterns all over. That's a little better. And finally, boots. Black, purple, brighter yellow. You can't see the yellow here, but it's usually the buckles. Finally, the backpack. We only have the one standard trail available to us. We only have the one backpack style available to us. But if we want to, we can go with a cape. Standard cape, if you want to go with that. I'm going to go with the cape this time because I'm curious about the planets that are windy and see how that affects it. It seems to be one of the new effects that they've thrown in, that they've thrown in here. Your jetpack is still in there, so when you hit your jetpack trails, it'll, it'll still show. Uh, here we go. Black. Let's see how it looks. Why does that look blue? Hmm, kind of like that. It must be the lighting in the station that's causing me a problem here. No. Go with the black cape. Ooh, black, black with the gold. I like that better. Okay, and finally you can change your banner and you can give yourself a title, especially if you made any achievements. Uh, I'm going to leave the banner the same for now. That'll be fine. Uh, well, there. That looks better. Okay, and then when you right-click, do you want to save? We hit yes, and this is going to be the character for what we're going to be doing with our stuff. Looks kind of dark and everything like that, but it ought to be... Pretty much fits what I want to do. This is your starship fabricator to create new starships and parts you acquire along the way. Not going to get into that right now. There's so many different tutorials on that. If you want to scrap a ship, you can do it here. If you're only down to one ship, you can't scrap it. You can't sell it. But you can sell a ship here and you can also scrap it. It gives you a lot of good items that you can get along the way. Again, we're not going to go into that right now. We don't really have it. So the next thing I need to do, it says to explore the space station, find life forms to ask about the mysterious signal. So we're going to just start asking people real quick, and we're going to have to come to a close here very soon. On this, anyway. Okay. Shatters away, addressing me with beady, inquisitive eyes. But when I blink, I see that same red light that stared at me at the distress beacon. We're going to repeat 16. We are watching you, traveler friend. Find what we have left you. Kind of creepy, isn't it? Though the alien speaks, the words are not their own. A string of code is echoed back to me through the red glare, logging directly to my exosuit. 
lobbed directly to my exosuit. The crimson light fades away, and I see the light form, life form blinking at me expectantly. Whatever's happened, they do not appear to have seen it. I should leave. Perhaps my base computer would be able to make something of this code. Awesome. Missing out on some chat. You can ask the same alien multiple times. This is true. We can do that. Is today the last day of Twitch drops? Yes, it is the very last day of the Twitch drops. This will give you day five Twitch drops. And probably if those have been watching since the beginning, they're going to get their last drop in five minutes. Uh, let's see. So we're going to leave. All right. So it's telling us that we've done all this here, right? And to teleport directly to our base. So we're instead of taking our ship to our base... Let me just see what happens when I talk to these guys. Oh, good. See, this is what we were talking about. So you can request dialect help to learn words from different creatures. So if I hit di di uh, request dialect help, uh, Buzz is their acknowledgement. They offer a list of language symbols, a choice of subjects to learn. So we're going to do travel symbol just to choose one. It teaches me a word in their, of their language. And there's the word, the word for unknown. So the more words you learn, the better off you are. All right, so jumping down here, we're going to go to their teleporter, as it's telling us to do, and we're going to go to our base. It's the only place we can go. So we're going to select it, warp to our base. Atticus, by the way, thanks for joining us. I missed, I missed saying hi earlier. I apologize, 07. Thank you for being here. And for everybody else who's here, I really appreciate your watching me today. Thank you very much. Okay. Here we are. We're out. So we're back to our base here. We're going to go to our base computer. Archives terminated. Select new task. We're going to begin decryption. Decoding. 16, 16, 16. Message follows. The traveler finds their wings. Fly to us and claim your place among the stars. That's it. Signal acquired. Life signs detected. We're going to go ahead and do this as well. Uh, where'd my ship go? So you notice the ship didn't go to the landing pad. It's not a landing pad that you made, so it's not going to just use it every time. So it did put it off to one side. So we are going to use some uh, fuel to take off. So as we take off, we're going to be told that there's a spot on the planet to go to, possibly a different planet. Looks like it's all the way over there. How far away is it? It says approximate location. It may be close. Ooh, we got a freighter. Um, what makes me think it's the freighter? Let's go to the freighter. Good thing about a freighter, by the way, a crashed freighter, is that it has a landing pad right there. We don't have to use our thrusters to take off with. So we're going to go ahead and land here. Freighters are really good because they have a lot of uh, cargo containers, so early game hitting those cargo containers up for, for goods is very important. In early game, though, at the first one you come to, it usually doesn't give you a whole lot. It gives you, like, credits, it gives you nanites, things like that. But we'll, we'll go through it in a minute. All right, so here we are. Log damage, partial records available. The signal has led me to the wreck of a freighter, colossal fragments of metal scattered across the landscape. Were these messages nothing but the misfiring circuits of a long-forgotten ruin? Nestled among the debris, I find the pilot's log blinking, awaiting input. Request the log. Instead of displaying the ship's log, the terminal spits out a strange sequence of numbers. They are followed by a short message. The anomaly comes for the stars. Take flight. A schematic for a hyperdrive is attached to the end of the message. Take the blueprint. I pull the blueprint from the computer, but this hyperdrive blueprint is for a conventional starship, not a freighter of this size. Someone placed this here after the crash, hoping it would be found. Creepy. So we need chromatic metal, and we need five microprocessors, of which we have one that we found on our own. So we'll install that in a little bit. Now, we can install it now, as it says. I usually put it down here for now. Hyperdrive. And we can put in some of the chromatic metal that we've made. We still need microprocessors. So if we exit, acquire components, purchase microprocessors. So we're going to go back to the space station here shortly. While we're here, use your... There we go, mining laser. We're going to start over here at one of these doors. Inside this door, with the mining laser, we get through it. You have cargo containers. Every single ship, every single freighter has, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six of these present. Two of them are above ground like this. When you open this cargo container, it will release 
radioactive materials, so you have to exit the, the uh, area quickly, or else it can damage you. You have to get rid of the goop. You can keep the metal if you want, if it has some. And then it opens and tells me I just received 73,000 units. So I just moved away from it. I missed my platform, so I'm going to go up over here. All right, another door. Here's the second above ground unit. Okay. See, now we've earned a lot of units. That's a lot of money considering we only had 10,000 earlier, right? The maximum amount of money you can get in this game, by the way, is about 4.25 billion. Okay. Look, if I stay put, watch what happens. See? Got to get far enough away to stop affecting you. There we go. So, what did we get that time? We got some more... I think we got some nanites out of that, or did we get something? I think we just got nanites. I don't know why that salt is in there. It shouldn't be there. Okay. Let's go over here. There's one under the ground over here. I'm going to show it to you real quick at the terrain manipulator. Okay. Look at the ground. You have a buckled panel there. Shoot through it with your laser. And then if you want to, switch back to your terrain manipulator, and we're going to show you this. We'll show you another way. Now, you can drop down in there, but usually when you're this far away, you can access it, as you can see. We'll just do the same thing. Get rid of your residual goop. Take the metal. Okay, and we got nanites out of that one. We'll go as far away as we can. We can do the same thing here if we want. There's another cargo container here. The thing is, is if you look down, you can see there's the cargo container. You can highlight it so you can see it through here. And if you get close enough, you should be able to access it. There you go. See? Cargo pod. And that way you don't have to dig down. Okay. More nanites. Radiation's hit me, but I'm far enough away now that it stopped affecting me. You have two more. You have one over here, as you can see. I'm going to highlight that one. You have another one over there, on the other side of the island over there. Let's go to that one first. I was going to go to this one first, but let me highlight it. That's actually just a cargo drop in the distance. And you should be able to do the same thing here. First person will get it. Mm, can't get it anymore in first person. Okay, so that's one of the changes. We'll have to dig down to it. And just get close enough that you can access it. There we go. That, we're going to take the rest of metal. We're getting a lot of rusted metal in this run. And then get out. Got some more nanites. We're only getting 20 nanites at a time, but at least it's something. Okay? And then finally, we're going to go to the other one. If we're fortunate, we'll get something special that's worth a lot of money. But usually your first freighter that you come across like this during the quest line does not have a lot. Last one is right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and dig down to it real quick. There we go. Take the metal. All right, here we go. Starship launch fuel. That's actually worth something. You can't sell it for a lot, but it's good to have for your ship. All right, so we got all six. We're all done here. And we can continue on. So we require 110,000 units in order to require all of our microprocessors. That's how much money we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back to our base show you how to get a little bit of extra money. We're just about noon right now. I got another half hour. And Marani, I think I want to check, or is it MJ? Who who has did some more work on their base? Somebody did. There you go. Okay. MJ, we're going to check out your base before we go. Yeah, <laughs> there's the warning for Marani. Thank you, Marani. <laughs> And here we go. Okay, so um, we need money, right? So what do we have in our inventory that we can sell? We can't really sell this. I'm going to put it in my ship. Uh, we definitely need to get that going. We do have one salvage data that we can that we can sell. It will give us fifty-two thousand. So it'll give us enough money to get by. Those are a good selling item to have, but we need more. Well, guess what? We have a what do you call it? We have a terrain manipulator now. So guess what? We're going to go with. Can't look through that because my ship. There we go. 
See the salvage container? We're going to go after it. It's actually... The, the contents are worth quite a bit of money. So if you're on a planet that's very uh, fortunate to have those or ancient bones, worth a lot. And very much worth your time getting. So we're going to walk out there. I probably should have taken my ship. Let's take the ship. Because we don't have a lot of time. We'll use a little bit of launch fuel. No big deal. Alright, there we go. So we've highlighted it. You highlight it with your visor when you when you look back it'll stay highlighted so you can go after that item all right so let's come into a landing over here near it now bones are not such a bad a big deal uh, ancient bones when you dig them up you just dig them up and you keep going unfortunately salvage data can, can salvage containers like this can acquire uh, attract attention from corrupted sentinels and the other sentinels around them as well. So we got to be careful here. So this is your salvage container. My suggestion is, if you're going to go ahead and do this, make yourself a hole nearby that sits back a little ways. Because when the corrupted sentinels come in, and they're a different variety and a little bit nastier, um, they will try to attack you. And then, let me see here, I need to... Just makes you a little, little room so I can see that upper appendage. All right. And then go ahead and take him out. Now, once you're done, meds kicking in, staying awake is no longer an option. See you all soon. Marani, take care. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate you. And you got an A-class hauler. Hey, fantastic. You can trade it in the round things for drop pod maps and sell the master. Yes, 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 yes. Good idea. We'll do that here in a minute. All right. Feel better, dear. I hope you feel better. All right. So, we're going to use our mining laser to take out the pieces of this. And as we take out these protective casings, those, those particular corrupted sentinels may appear. Nothing yet. We got lucky. And three... Ooh, we got three casings on it. That's really good. Once the casings are gone... And corrupted sentinel alert. There were four protective casings, and this is the salvage container. See those purple guys? They're bad news. We got a rare item worth 1,460, and they will keep shooting you, so it is time to leave. I don't have a weapon to fight them with. I could use my mining beam, but it's just not worth it. And if we get in our ship now... Ow, hey, flames. If we get in our ship now, they will just attack us from the air. So get far enough away that they lose interest. Now, it's not counting at this point. I don't know if we can pull our ship in. We see. We can. All right, so it shouldn't pull any sentinels in. If it didn't if it didn't allow it to pull a ship in, then we wouldn't have been able to go. We wouldn't have been able to uh, to leave. All right, so, so no sentinels inbound. We're good. We're in good shape. Okay, we're going to recharge our launch thrusters and go. So, how much money did we make? We're going to find out in a moment. Set for the space station. I could take the portal, but we'll just go this way. Because we're here. And we should have enough time to do a little quick base view. Okay, off to the space station we go. While we're there, we can go in our menu and check things out. Exosuit. So what's, how much is this worth? 1.5 million. So we just made ourselves 1.5 million from one item. Now, what she said about the navigation data, we're going to show you how that works. Whoa, okay. I can just get this going. Wow, okay, it bounced me around all over the place when it when that happened. There we go. Uh drop pod maps maps. That's exactly what I was looking for. I was just looking for the name. Drop pod maps is what we want to look for. So let's go do that real quick and then we're gonna sell everything. Okay? So we're going to go over here to this guy right there. He sells maps. If we can buy them. Let's see. Ah, good. 
Now, you don't want to just perch random, or purchase random ones. With 15 nanites, you want to go to exchange specific charts. And the exosuit upgrade charts down here, you can purchase with um, three of your navigation data. Okay? That you have. I, I'm just going to get two of them. One, two. Because if I get any more, I'll run out. Okay? So I do want to keep a couple of my navigation data. I've got two of them. Why is that valuable? Because they're worth 185000 each. I didn't mean to hit that button. I was trying to separate it out. So I just spent money on one that I lost. 85000 each is what they're worth. That's okay. That's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the terminal here. And we're going to sell it. Exosuit inventory. We're going to go down to exosuit upgrade chart and get rid of it. It's not giving us the as much money for it. It's actually giving us quite a bit. They're worth eighty-five thousand. We're selling it for one hundred twenty-seven thousand. That's pretty good. So we're going to get rid of that, and let's get rid of our advanced pneumatics. It's giving us a little bit of less on that one, but still one point four, almost one point five million. Fantastic. We now have enough money to buy microprocessors. Let's get one, two, three, four of those, and we're done. We don't need anything else, and we now have a lot of money on us. So we're doing really, really good now. So this is good. All right, so we're gonna head back to, we can now install our uh, hyperdrive. Let me go over there. There it is. Hyperdrive installed, and we're done. We need to charge it though. I'm listening for the, okay, that. Okay, it's, it's stuck on that. We're gonna go over here. Waiting for the music. Okay, so our hyperdrive is done. Let's go get in our ship. You see, nothing's actually happening. Journey milestone. What we? Oh, it's probably for the money. Money maker, and it's going to start climbing up. As we sit here, it'll keep climbing and climbing. There you go, tycoon at 1.6 million. We didn't quite make the top achievement for the money yet. We'll get there soon. I think it's at 1.8, if I remember correctly. There you go, there's the music, indicating that the milestone is complete. Install the hyperdrive objective complete, craft warp fuel, find antimatter recipe. So if we get in our ship, auto diagnostic report, hyperdrive successfully installed, hyperdrive fuel status empty, my hyperdrive is complete, but I really will, perhaps I really will find answers out there amidst the stars. But without warp cells, I'm going nowhere. I need to find a source of antimatter. Okay, so we tune the scanner to antimatter. It's going to direct us to a planet where we can find it uh, as we leave. Before we do that, though, we're, not, we're going to stop there. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick base tour of MJ's base. Oh, look, that is a, that's a traveler who landed in a ship. This is a very rare thing. If you can find travelers on space stations anywhere, and I've never seen one standing next to a ship in a space station, this is a first. Travelers are very important, folks. The other travelers you find, and he's just talking away, and I can't seem to break away. Did I just break the game? Nothing happens. That's all that happens. Normally what they'll do is they'll start talking to you and you'll have an exchange of comments back and forth and then you can get where they're buried at, where their gravestone is located and you can get items from that gravestone. But apparently you can't do anything at this point. So we will be coming back at some point and checking that out, I think. That is the craziest thing I think I've ever seen. Beautiful ships, by the way. You're always going to find C-Class in a, in a place like this, but with the economy the way it is. All right, so I am going to, I've emptied, I've gotten out of my ship and I'm going to go, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just running around at this point. Let me get in and out of my ship one more time. That is the craziest thing and I'm glad I saw that. So we will come back to this probably Wednesday night. No, Wednesday night we're going to have the expedition. So we'll be doing a deep dive in the expedition, but I'm hoping you guys have enjoyed as much, as much about this as possible. Follow the directions at the bottom right at this point, And if you have questions, Jump over on my YouTube channel. You can spam me with questions as much to your heart's content as you wish. I've never seen that before. That is the craziest thing, too. So now we have a save point. Let's get out of here. I'm going to go back to the mode, and we're going to do that quick base tour. Now there's a kitchen there. I'm really curious as to what it's like. 
Hey, Demaker, no problem. You've learned things, too, as much time as you spent playing this game? Good grief. I think we all have, actually. So it's more necessary for me to um, end on time today than, ev than ever because the uh, uh, my co-supervisor, the guy you know is Sugar Rat, unfortunately had a situation occur that he has to leave half day today. So he's just there for the morning, um, and I'm going to take over for the afternoon and be remote, unfortunately. If I had known that, I probably would have found a way to drive in, but it is what it is. All right, so we are in the anomaly. Um, let's go to our place our home base. We'll go ahead and just use the portal to get there. Ah, we don't have a weekend anomaly mission, but in case you guys are wondering, the three icons on the right-hand side are Quicksilver, you know, um, regular ordinary missions. You can get up to three at a maximum, but when these purple ones show up, they're a special one. I don't know if you all have ever seen this before. You get an unusual mission that you can do, and it gives you usually an incredible amount of stuff this case more units than usual but in this case you're getting hadal cores 25 and that's an incredible amount of hadal cores if you really need them they're worth a lot you can turn them into nanites or you can sell them for a lot of money so that's actually worth it if you can get that so not going to do it today but that gives you an idea what those purple icons mean they don't pop up often oh i will i will of course i will i will definitely see him tomorrow uh, when we actually get to physical workplace off we go. We are going to, and by the way, community highlights, as you can see, these are different places you can go. The people have built the most incredible things, but they'll also be in strange galaxies. So they'll be in galaxies you've never been to before. And all you have to do is go there to have access to the galaxy. Just go to another planet someplace or another area of the planet and drop down a base computer and you can always go back to this galaxy anytime you want. Or go to the space station in the in the area that they're in. Once you go to the space station, you'll have access to that galaxy every single time. Uh, we might just show that here in a little bit, but let's go to the bases. Um, down here. One, two. One orbit. Go. I should have went to the Whitney outpost now that I think about it. That's okay. So if you've been here since the beginning, you should have your three-hour streams completed. And done. Cool, got some people following me over on the No Man's Sky uh, Instagram account. Hey, it's daytime for once. And that's what this planet looks like. Absolutely beautiful. Let's see how it changes when they make their changes, anyway. This is a low-orbit base, so I'm literally on the edge of space and in the clouds. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, say beacon. Type B. E. That's the one. I'm diverting power to engines. Not something I've taught, but if you check out my one-on-one -on -one videos on... It's just going to take me to that farm. But that's okay. I'll come out earlier and hit down. Um, if you check out my videos on YouTube, I do have one-on-one -on -one videos that will teach you all about that. Suggestion. Make more um, landing pads. You want to have guests, unless you're that much of an introvert. No criticism, just joking. All right. I love this. This is actually hilarious that you have a Sentinel monitoring station. You know, too bad we can't encase it, build walls all the way around it, like make them all glass, make it look like a zoo. Like you're keeping all the Sentinels inside. That would be absolutely hilarious. Just a thought. I don't know why I thought of that. All right, we're here to check out the uh, ooh, posters. Nice. Got the bar going. Good, good. Okay, okay. Nice. Another desk area over there. Uh, another chair to play No Man's Sky. Good, good. Seating area. Good grief. You want kind of nuts over here. This is fabulous. This is all new. Um, pool table. Okay, good, 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 good. Nice. Nice sitting area. Good, good, good. This is the bathroom, in case anybody's wondering. Some 
Those are tubs. Very nice. That's a toilet. A mode. Pardon me. Okay, I'm getting lost. What in the world? <gasps> walk in. Walk in pantry. Or refrigerator, as the case may be. Surely you can't be serious. Hey, I serious. am serious. And don't call me sure. Nice barbecue grill. Thank you very much for subscribing. Over that's over on the YouTube channel. I really appreciate that. Thank you very very much. Oh seven, by the way. Oh seven. All right. Where am I going here? I'm all over the place. Hold on. Okay, so here's the exit. Ah ah, here here. Very nice. Prep area. Good good good. So the kitchen is complete. Absolutely fabulous. It just gets better and better. Every time I walk in here, it's something new and something crazy. Pictures on the walls. Very, very nice. Look at that. There's the sinks. Very nice. This is the prep area, obviously. Very nice. And you got a battery storing uh, 45,000 units hidden in the wall right there. That's pretty slick. Nice way to hide the stuff. I missed a lot. Picked up over 20 what? What way? Oh, 20 galaxies. Yeah, we're going to check that out here in just a second. Hey, Shrek the Hulk, good to have you here, by the way. I'll be ending soon, so you're coming in a little late. But that's okay. That's okay. This is absolutely fabulous. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Oh, it's a terrain. I'm sorry. Pool table. This is the new item that you can get. That is really, really cool. We got this in the last expedition. That is really, really cool. I like that a lot. An overhead terrain map, holographic image. Fabulous. Very pretty. Very pretty. Nice guest area, so to speak. A little bed over there to chill out on, read books. I love it. This is an awesome area. Look, look, he really wants to get in. Ooh, we have a trader that landed nearby. This is why you need the other, the other landing pads. He landed in your base. What in the world? They landed in your base. They, them, thus. And they never got out of their ship. Little glitch there that happens on occasion. Oh, no, no, there they are. What do you got for us? These traders that drop in on all planets, for those of you who are new. You can offer to trade or you can even purchase their ship if you want. And they always sell things like this. Oh, they got nip-nip buds for once. I didn't know they carried those. That's new. Wow. The only thing you can sell is the stuff out of your own inventory. So, nothing special there. But that's what you can buy. And if you want to buy their ship, you can just basically go in here. This is great for permadeath, no starter ship challenges. You can purchase their ship from them by negotiating a price. And obviously my ship is probably worth a little bit more than that. So, it is what it is. Okay. So that's what you do there. All right, good deal. Very, very nice. Really, really like this a lot. What was that? Oh, an oxygen. Oxygen plant. Okay. It almost looks like, and you look down here, I know this is the edge of the uh, landing pad, but it almost looks like it's solar power. It's very funny. There we go. All right. Very nice. Such a pretty planet, it really, really is. I love this place. I like how the landing platform is hidden too. This this is gonna take me time to figure this out. But this is really cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, we need to contain these guys. That's what we need to do. Big walls, lots of glass. Glass, 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 glass. Anyway, there is that. Lovely planet, though, this is. Let's... I want to check out the anomaly real quick one more time. Thank you very much, by the way. Absolutely gorgeous base. It's really looking fantastic. I'm not even sure if there's anything more you need to do there. To be honest, it looks fabulous. I made a base in a cave. As long as you didn't carve out the cave too, too much. If you had to carve anything out, there's por portions of that cave may restructure. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, they look that way as well. Yes, yes, yes. But special community board now on how to hide the path.
Oh, bye, April. Take care. We'll see you. I missed that. It's in there. Hey, Auntie. Unreal. Unreal. Back to the main screen here. Uh, I thought maybe I lost internet connection or something like that. Yes, I'm back. It was actually this time OBS decided to lock up and freeze on me. I mean, my audio was bouncing around and everything. I'm like, well, that's weird, but my camera's frozen. So what's going on here? And then uh, all of a sudden, the audio just froze and stopped. And I don't know what happened. But thank you. Thank you for the welcome backs. We're not going to stay much longer. Uh, let me switch back over real quick. There we go. This is where I ended up. So we're going to go ahead and just show you this real quick. We're going to go over to... And as I'm getting in and out of No Man's Sky, of course, it's going to have problems. I I switched away from OBS. A lot of people uh, recommended OBS a while ago and said, hey, go back to OBS. I'm like, all right, I'll check it out. And it looked pretty good. It looked like they've done a lot of improvements. But I've been using some called, hold on, Prime, uh, pardon me, Prism Live Studio and also Streamlabs Desktop in order to do a lot of streaming lately. So that's what I've been using. Um, it seems odd to me that OBS being one of the premier ones that have been out there for so long has so much trouble like this and I don't understand why that problem is so it is what it is but hey got most of the stream here one more time real quick I've only got a few minutes left anyway so it's not a big big deal so for those of you hopefully you got all of your um, drops at this point I think I got mine I'll be checking later Okay. Just checking stuff out over here. I'm not frozen, sorry. More like my face is frozen. Do, 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 do. Keep saying it's ended, but... Doesn't look like it ended to me. Can you guys see anything? Can you guys see any of the game? Have we, we got that working or what? Do, do, do. There it is. Yeah, we're back. Okay, I got it. Don't know what in the world happened anyway. But hey, this looks familiar. <laughs> Load it in. Okay, good, good. Maker, I thought you were leaving. What are you still doing here? Were you here the whole time? I don't know. Put in the EBS into OBS. Yeah, tell me about it. All right, one more time. Just want to get to that one place. Uh, and yeah, No Man's Sky seems to have a little bit of an issue. If I if I click on something else off screen and then click back over to it, it crashes, and I don't know why it does that. I do want to check this one out. I don't know where they're at. We'll check in a minute and see what we come up with. Very odd. Very odd. But is what it is. Hope I'll be able to claim them someday. Yeah. If Microsoft and all the rest of them get done with it. We're hoping that they'll be done in the next couple of days. So when the expedition goes live on Wednesday, everybody will have an opportunity to check it out. That'll be pretty cool. Again, Wednesday night. Wednesday night for me, that'll be about 6.15 or so Eastern time um, here in the U.S., is when I'm going to go live stream on that night. We'll stream for a few hours and check out the uh, expedition. Study it. Determine if there's any speedrunning available, which they all seem to have the ability to be speedrun. Unification Day 2022 system. Okay. But, where are we? I think we have to get in our ship and go into hyperspace in order to find out. But, save point. Okay. Interesting. So where'd my ship end up? Oh, oh my. They built a maze. Holy crap. They built a labyrinth. Isn't that cool? That's a landed pilot. But where's my ship at? Do I not get my ship here? 
Can I bring my ship in? I can. That's kind of crazy. That was really, really wild. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's probably the same galaxy as me. That is a wild, wild thing to build. That takes a lot of, a lot of skill, man. That's craziness right there. All right. You're probably right. I think we're still in Isentum is where I think I was. Yep, Isentum. Okay, so we ended up in the same galaxy. Nothing special there. That's pretty crazy. I think I have time for one more. Yeah, a little bit of time. I got to call it here very, very soon. OBS tried to call it for me a little early. It's amazing how fast you get into these stations now. I wonder if that's a bug or if that's designed that way now. Always the furthest space. Right. That's true. It should say right on there what galaxy they're in. That's true. I think one of them said something else. Let me just check it real quick. One more time. Try one more galaxy, or one more state, one more uh, highlight, just to see what they got. I think if we select it first, yeah, it's not saying. So I'm assuming they're in the same galaxy. Oh, there you go. There you go, right there. Is a it is Dora Zheng galaxy? I don't think I've been there before. This is new. I don't think I've been to this galaxy before. There it is, right there, right there. That's a galaxy I don't think I've ever been in. Let's go ahead and head there, and then I'm just going to go hit the space station, and we'll have the space station in my inventory. So I don't have to drop down a base computer or anything like that. So last run, and then we're going to call it after this. Sooner or later we'll pop in. Here we go. Wow. Beautiful place. I wish I had time to check it out, honestly. But once again, I don't see my ship anywhere. And I thought my ship would pop in no matter what galaxy you go to. So... Again, hidden landing pad, very nice. So, very cool place. There's the butterfly house down there, that's pretty cool. Um, I will check it out another time, but this is how you get to another galaxy, basically. And then what we're going to do is we're going to head out. Real quick, cool planet to build that on. There's our star, our, there it is right there. Space station. So again, I don't think I've ever been to this galaxy before, but we'll at least have the space station. It'll be logged in our uh, in our account that we can go here anytime we want, anytime we look up space stations to go to. So that's pretty good. Yep. So galaxy, if you go into there, top left, galaxy core, Kiko Kiko Galler, I guess it's pronounced. I'm not sure. I think it's just made up a bunch of words, a bunch of letters stuck together. So that's how you get there. Wow. And it had to be one of these space stations that are on the other side of the, uh, you know, solar system from them. Pharaoh. I think Pharaoh's been around a while, too. 
There we go. I like seeing all these freighters and frigates popping up into the station itself. There we go. All right. And we now have this logged in my space station uh, inventory, if you will, for my teleporters. And there we go. Shore point saved. All right. So I've got to call it here, folks. Unfortunately, I've got to run um, and call it a day for me. Um, thank you for jumping back in real quick. Uh, sorry about that. The craziest thing in the world. Um, we have a first time chatter I missed. I am so sorry. That's about when I crashed, I guess. Uh, Sir, Th Sir Thulhu, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. And 07 to you. Thank you for jumping in. Uh, sorry we missed you in case you you dropped you dropped out of the stream when I crashed. I apologize. So, But thank you very much, guys. Um, if there's anybody else that is streaming right now, we can check that out. Let me go back to my main screen. I did figure that out, too. It didn't take much to figure out. Okay. Point, 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 point. Stay with me for just a couple moments. We'll see if we can uh, raid somebody real quick. Yep, I know. Right there. I really need to make a shortcut to that. There. All right. Raid channel. Following. So who we got? Ready to Tina, Michelle, and Jason. You know what? Let's jump over on Jason real quick. I think it's time I raided him for once. So we're going to go ahead and raid Jason. And uh, if you guys stick around, you can watch Jason plays. Uh, get some of the... Uh, it looks like he's only just started a little bit ago. Um, so you'll be able to see what kind of uh, things he's gotten and some of the stuff he's gotten from the anomaly through the Twitch drops and stuff like that too. So here we go, folks. Thank you again for watching. We're going to go ahead and start our raid over there. We'll see you Wednesday night over on YouTube. That's when I'll be live again. Okay, folks? So again, thank you very much. You guys have been fabulous. Take care. And, and new to, uh, to all the new chatters, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. Take care, everybody.